Sabbath church family. It is always good to be with you here online. Uh, we're excited for the worship experience today. I'm telling you, it is going to be power packed. Uh, I, I see you already in the chat. Let me just take a look over here. I see Clayton and Andre Smith says, pleasant Sabbath family of God at OUC all the way in. Greetings from Trinidad and Tobago. Edith Hughes, we, we say happy Sabbath to you as well <laughs> from Washington State. I love it. Uh, happy Sabbath from Syracuse, New York. Precious Jules is with us today. Uh, several others of you are with us. There's 261 devices connected right now, and we are excited for our worship experience today. How has your week been? I want you to kind of talk with me a little bit. Uh, for those that didn't check the flyer, you didn't see the title of the live stream, Today's message is, that's a good offer. That, that's a good offer. How many of you enjoyed the message last week from Pastor Snell uh, continuing with Jonah? I don't know exactly if he's going to be with Jonah this week or not, but I can tell you just from some of the notes he shared with me, we are in for a treat today. That's a good offer. That's a good offer. Uh, sometimes you just got to recognize when you get a good offer, right? And uh, <laughs> I don't know where he's going to go with it, so I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. All right. Kimberly Russell says, woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Happy Sabbath from San Diego, California. I love it. Uh, Gwen says it was a good week. God is always good no matter the week. That is true. That is true. That is true. Sometimes it's just perspective that, that allows us to hear and understand the different things that are happening. Uh, 
Uh, let me see what else we got here. I love the message last Sabbath. Andre, Andrea Matthew said, I love the message. Baldwin Dulston is with us saying happy Sabbath. Uh, Rundolph Velvart says, happy Sabbath, Pastor Kirk. Thank you so much, man. I, I'm excited. If you can't tell, I'm excited to be here. Uh, one of the young people came up to me already and they were like, man, no, no J's this week, doc. I said, man, I, you know, every now and again, I put on a tie, you know, it's not, <laughs> it's not uncommon, but I, I get to host the, the Praise Cafe today with my lovely wife. So I wanted to, you know, I wanted to kind of put myself together a little bit, you know, so, uh, but man, we are excited for the worship experience this week. I, I had to do some travel this week. There's it's just all kinds of things happening. I was not physically in the building last week. I, I recorded the intro and sent that in. And uh, I was with uh, some of our, our brothers and sisters in the Gulf States Conference down in Montgomery, Alabama, was speaking at a digital evangelism conference. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, some 60 or 70 people that, that were there, communications directors from all over. It was an awesome time. It was an awesome time. Man, I see you in the chat. I see you in the chat. Oh, man. I love seeing this. I love seeing this. There's 337 people, uh, 337 devices connected right now. And we want to make sure that you are not just connecting in and pushing it off to the side. We want to make sure you connect in and that you are engaging with us. Whole reason why we created this space called the Praise Cafe. The whole reason why we have this online uh, portion of our Sabbath school, uh, um, online discussion, and then what we do in the middle of the service and after service is so that we can engage directly with you. We want to speak directly to you. We want to look directly at the camera and, and for you to know we're not talking to an audience. There's nobody behind there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's literally just you that we're talking to and that makes it personal. And what that means is you are the audience. Uh, all 358 devices that are connected and we don't know how many other people that are behind those devices. This is the thing I love uh, uh, about live streaming as a practice and as a principle. One of the things that we, we've shared um, on my channel and my show uh, several times, and in fact, we even made it into a t-shirt, and it's this one phrase. And it's, it's always interesting to, to hear this phrase stated by people from varying different backgrounds, right? People who are atheist, Muslim, all kinds of different things, all different types of belief systems, but they all can agree that live streaming, this is the phrase, live streaming is a little glimpse of omnipresence. It's like God just created live streaming for us and dropped it in there and said, listen, this is what, this is how I am all the time. I'm able to be in all these different places. And so as you guys are sharing, uh, some of you are watching from California, some of you are watching from Florida, some are watching from Guyana, somebody said they're watching uh, from Zambia. Uh, people are watching from literally all over the world. Imagine all those locations are seeing me live at the same time. That, that's a little glimpse of omnipresence. And this is why I am so convinced that technology and media was given to us from the hand of God that we might finish the work. How will we utilize these platforms? How will we utilize these modern innovations so that we can share the gospel to the world in a way that they can get to it, where it's tangible, where it's it's not out, it's, it's not put behind a wall. They don't physically have to come into a building. We put it online we put it in their way. We put it in a space that they would have to literally step around it if they didn't want it, right? And, and that allows us, that enables us. I, I can only imagine what the, the disciples would do with something called live streaming, with content creation, with social media, and the vast ways we can spread the gospel in these ways. I, I'm excited, if you can't tell, about how we are utilizing uh, live streaming and technology and media in these ways here at the Oakwood University Church, but across the world. And we are excited for worship today. Share this link with a friend. That's how you're part of the gospel delivery system. Sharing this link with a friend. Tag someone in the comments on Facebook. Let them know worship is about to begin and we've saved a digital seat just for you. Let's bow our heads. God, we are so thankful for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We're thankful that you are in the midst. You, 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 you gave us these tools and these, these platforms and these innovations for us to be able to use for your glory. It is still a wonder to me, God, that you continue to use fallen, broken, sinful man in the work of sharing the gospel. You, you, you give us an opportunity to, to be co-laborers, to be able to share with others the light for a dying world. Father, bless us now in our worship experience. Be with us in everything that we endeavor to do. 
Uh, we, we, we pray for the tailors who will come now and, 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 and uh, lead us in our discussion for Sabbath school. We pray for the other Sabbath school discussions that are happening in person just behind the wall where the camera is seated. We pray for the entire worship experience and all those that will take part from the OUC Children's Choir to Pastor Snell who will preach the word. Bless every aspect and the technology so that our worship experience will be full and rich today that we might say, it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Bless us to this end, we pray, God, in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Head down. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We have missed you guys. Yes, we have. Yes, yes we, we have. have. We have missed you guys so much. And we are just so excited to be back today. I'm, you know, yes. it's been two whole weeks and we are back. Thank you, Kimberly. Yes, yes, we are back. We Precious are back. Jewel. Thank yes, you. and we have been missing our OUC online Our family. family. And uh, we thank you for the words that Pastor Kurt um, laid out there, you know, yes. share this digital space with as many people as possible so that we can continue to just bring people in, you know, like yes. a family. And that was an awesome prayer that he gave to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So with that, you know, we want to tell you guys, join in with us. You know, each week Absolutely. I tell you guys, this is a a, a family thing. Yes. Uh, put your comments and your, your chats. Questions. Yes, yes, yes. Put them in. Put them in there so we can interact. Hi, Paris. How yeah. are you? Yeah, yeah. Reggie, good morning. So, yes. you know, we're just definitely, definitely excited. Um, we're at the end of this quarter. Yes. Uh huh. We are at the end of this quarter. Thank you, Sheila. Yes, uh, hey, and, Sheila. And um, yeah. Randolph. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. We're gonna be saying hi. All day long, I Pearl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Kimberly, our mainstay and precious jewels. Rachel. Yeah, but we are at the end of this quarter. Yes. That's amazing. And uh, this quarter was all about Ephesians, what yes, Paul what wrote Paul, in Ephesians. It's some good stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So with this, you know, we're at uh, the point where it covers the whole chapter. Yes. There's, um, well, not the whole chapter, the whole but the whole quarter, book. The whole well, the whole book Quarterly. of Ephesians, mm -hmm. uh, chapters one through six. So uh, this was kind of a big task uh, for this week's lesson because it covered chapters one through six. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, good morning, Sharon. Yes, uh, Amanda. Mm -hmm. And Robert, yeah, happy yes. Sabbath. So yeah, so it covers the whole chapter. So that's a pretty big leap, you know, to try to get in the whole book mm -hmm. of Ephesians kind of in one talk. But we're going to kind of touch on that today. Yes, yeah. there's mm -hmm. some good stuff. There's some yeah. good stuff today. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, our, our opening slide tells us, is, you know, it's got to be in your heart. 
That's right. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Ephesians at the heart, you know, that's our opening slide. You know. Yes. And, you know, I love this slide. Um, mm -hmm. Ephesians, my heart, Christ's home. Ooh, yeah. And it makes me think of the saying, home is where the heart is. That's true. You know that? Mm -hmm. And basically when I think of home is where the heart is, you know, for me that means your home is always the place for which you feel the deepest affection. Mm -hmm. Um what you mostly are attached to, um, no matter where you are. And so for me, when I think about this, you know, I want God to be my foundation. I want yes. him to be where my heart is, my love for him. So for me, when I read uh, my heart, Christ's home, I want Christ to be my home. Yeah. So when I saw this slide that you created, I said, oh, that's awesome oh. for this Saturday. Well, Saturday. thank you. So, yes. For that picture art. Yes, I want him um, wherever I go to be yeah. my home. Yeah, and, and what I liked about it, it had a heart, the key. Yes. You know, the lock itself, you know, it is a heart. And, um, you know, the Bible tells us where our treasure is, that's where our heart is. Yes. And it goes both ways. Wherever you, your heart is, you know, and my heart, Christ's home. So, yes. We love that. And, and we'll look at the next slide, too. The next slide gives us this text from Ephesians 2, um, 8 through 10. And it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Mm. You know, for me, um, that was the opening text in um, the lesson for the first day, Sabbath mm -hmm. lesson. And for me, that text is very powerful okay. because what Paul is telling us is that we are saved through faith. Right. Right. And, you know, guys, I know it gets tough. Like when you think about it, when you think about salvation, when you think about being a sinner, when you think about just the process of life itself and what God has done for us, Paul has told us we're saved through faith, nothing else. All we have to do is believe. Yeah, and, and, and that leaves out the boasting for anyone else because, I mean, you know, your faith has to have works, and we get that a little confused as well. Mm -hmm. But be it, we're saved by faith. I want y'all to hear that and get it. And all you have to do is believe. In John 3, 16, I've said this before, if you are uh, defending a dissertation, uh, it is actually your thesis statement, your right. thesis statement. Mm -hmm. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in shall him not shall not perish but have everlasting life. So with that, guys, what Paul is saying, we're saved by faith. By faith. Mm -hmm. And it's through grace and mercy. Because where sin abounds, grace does much mm -hmm. more abound. Right. So it starts to come together and paints a beautiful picture. And that faith is exercised by the different things that we go through in life. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. And, and, and when you say that, like, how, how are you meaning, like, the different things we go through in life? I love that statement. Um, if I'm sick, dealing uh, with some pain, consistent yeah. everyday pain, mm -hmm. um, faith that I'm, I'm, God is going to heal and take away that pain, um, faith when we go through marital problems that, yes. oh, this too shall pass. You put a little emphasis in well, that. Well, you know, because I'm keeping it real. Okay, all right. Okay. And then, and then faith, um, whatever, if it's something pertaining to work, our children. Yeah. I mean, our faith has to be exercised through those things to let, you know, to trust in God that he's going to help us to get through that. Yes, yeah, so. Whatever it is. So my faith grows in my life experience. Life experience. Because Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So I'm hoping for or something better right and then it becomes the evidence of things not seen I, I I love that so and and then once it happens and when it happens it doesn't always happen in our time mm -hmm. and we don't know why but we do know that once it happened you know that's where our testimony comes in mm -hmm. you know yeah that God is faithful yeah that he's faithful and and Paul is telling us that all throughout the book of Ephesians that 
we're saved by the grace of God, which is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you're looking at this. We just read this text in uh, Hebrews, I mean, not Hebrews, but uh, Ephesians 2, where Paul says we're saved by faith. And, and yes. I, I just love that. And, and then um, um, Reynald said we're saved by grace through faith. This faith starts with the fact of Jesus and I respond. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. I love he's, that. And Hebrews helps us out with that. He's mm -hmm. the author and finisher of our faith, you know, so everything starts with God. And uh, Pearl said, faith equals trust and obedience. Great, great. And we love it, guys, because when we begin to unpack and understand this idea of what mm -hmm. Paul is trying to tell us, because he says this, and we'll touch on it some, that his prayer is that we come to a clear understanding. And Amanda asked a question. She said, does it depend how small or great your faith is to receive the greatest blessings? Ooh, that's this a good is, question. That's a good question. I, and I Amanda. love that question, yeah. Amanda, because this is, you know, the Hebrews tells us that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, right? Mm -hmm. And to each of us, we're given a measure of faith. Right. And this is what I love about it. Sometimes we look at other people and we're like, hey, their, their faith is a whole lot stronger than mine. Don't worry about that because right. your faith is tailor made for you. Mm -hmm. The author, Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith. That means That's he right. writes it. Yes. Like a book, you know, because we know an author pins a book. So Jesus writes your your faith walk. Mm. I love it. And, and he knows the heart. And he, know, and he loves the heart. And then not only that, as he's walking your faith walk, as he's writing your faith walk, he makes it real for you. I love it. Mm. So that's a great question. You know, it, 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 there's no big and there's no little. There's just faith. That's right. That's right. And, and then also we can have the... Um, our faith can be the size of a mustard, mustard seed. seed. Yes, and, and it grows. Very, very it tiny. It grows. Yes, it grows. Yes. So, so don't look at your faith as being too small, and then don't get arrogant and look at your faith as being mm. huge, right? right? Because we're all in the room of improvement, right? Right, and we have a need to improve, and we're not perfected until the second coming. Mm. So, great question. Yes, great so question. no faith yes. is too small, all <laughs> right. Is awesome. Yes, because it's the size of a mustard seed. So with that, because of that, guys, in this next side, we are blessed in Christ. We are blessed. Yes. And with us being blessed, it says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with mm. all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he proposed in Christ mm. to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and earth under Christ. One more, one more, babe. And then I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. Mm. Yes. And I, I love that because that was a lot, guys. Yeah, it was a lot. So yeah. let's, let's break it down. Yeah, yeah. We, we, read, we read a lot. Uh, but in that, you know, Paul is was telling us that we are blessed in Christ. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So you read uh, Ephesians uh, 1, uh, 7 through 10. Right. Mm -hmm. And and in 7 through 10, that redemption comes through his blood. Right. And, and that's what that I mean, that that's the essence of it. So, guys, I, I, we, we've been tasked for this mm -hmm. week to talk about the whole book of Ephesians all in one fell swoop, which is very difficult. But if you see the tenor of this book, uh, Paul in the first chapter tells us it's through his blood and it's by faith we've been saved. Oh, so yeah. it's like, you know, um, you, when you have a very bright light. And, and, and someone uh, puts you under it, uh, all you can see is that light. What Paul is trying to do is take that light and shine it on the cross. Yes. On because Jesus. We, we, didn't, we didn't break the curse. We didn't break the curse no, of we saying didn't. Christ did for us. Yes, that's right. You know. So what, what Paul is doing is changing that, that, that light and shining it on the cross, right. a resurrected Christ, right? And he kept... He made us alive. Mm, yes, he did. He made us alive. Yes, and, he did. And um, so... Yes. By what he's done for us. Yes. And I can even feel the passion in Paul's words where he says, mm -hmm. I keep asking God that he can bring you to this part place where I am. You know, this place of belief where 
I know without a shadow of a doubt that God through Christ has brought me back right. to an existence with him. Mm-hmm. Although my life on earth is tough because Paul even prayed about a thorn in his flesh, mm-hmm. but although my life is tough, I'm looking at the other side of it. And that's what faith does. You know, uh, we, we, uh, were blessed to, uh, attend a, a church cause we were traveling and um, this one guy was preaching and he said, sometimes your blessing is not on this side. No. Your healing is not on this side. Right. But when you when you operate in faith and through faith, you know that although your healing might not be now, mm-hmm. it's going to be later for sure, because Christ will do it at his second coming. What we feel like has not been done before. And, and you know, and some for some of us, you know, that can be a hard thing yes. if you're going through. A chronic illness or something, a trial or tribulation that just never seems to end. But what mm-hmm. you're saying is, though, even if things don't change on this yes. side, mm-hmm. we know the promises that God has given us on the other side. Yes. And that's where our faith and hope can lie in those promises. Yes, guys. And what, what Sister Taylor said that, <laughs> you know, we it's a powerful point. You know, we expect for our blessings to happen now, although we do get blessings. Yes, we do. Because if you woke up this morning, that is a blessing. Right. You know, if you're in your right mind, that is a blessing. But sometimes we look at those 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 things that are besetting us now, especially mm-hmm. when it comes to sickness and, and loss of life and, and just the things that press us, our existence from, you know, growing up, you know, just bad memories or just whatever. Mm -hmm. If something happened to you adverse, you know, we want freedom from it now. But what God is telling us through Christ in the word that you can have that freedom by faith. Right. And it becomes it becomes a bliss that you can operate in. You know, like what Jesus has said, the the joy that I'm going to give you, the world cannot take Mm -hmm. it away. Right. And, and, and that's how we've got to operate in this thing. And I just love it. Yeah, and then I just want to add, too, you know, we can't boast in ourselves for something another person accomplished. You know, that's you right. have some people, you know, you give them an idea and they take it and run with it and they claim that it's theirs. Right. But, that's you right. know, what God did for us by giving his son is mm-hmm. not our marriage. It's Christ's marriage or it what is. he did for us. Mm-hmm. So we always need to remember that and, and definitely um appreciate that Mm -hmm. and you are robert thank god for his mercy yes and his grace so i mean that that's how that's how we have to operate in this life and um you know we're we're still looking at the tenor of ephesians right right and what paul is trying to communicate to those who are walking in this walk Mm -hmm. that is a new light a, a light that we've been accustomed to, or even an old light, mm-hmm. right? For some of us in that in that in that space, it's becoming a new light. Like, Lord, I'm 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 getting new revelations from you. For some of us, where it's been a consistent walk, right? Okay. Like this light is not so new. And then for some of us, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. But what Paul is saying, come back and and listen and and learn and and begin to love what Christ has done for us, and 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 and, and it's all about. Jesus. That's what and I love about too, it. And and when we, when it clicks, mm-hmm. and I've mentioned about that light switch clicking um, mm-hmm. with each of us, I truly believe that that will be something that as an individual, we, we actually understand and appreciate the fact that, you know what, God, you know, me exercising my faith mm-hmm. here in this world, regardless of what's going on, but my hope and my foundation is what your word has told us Mm -hmm. on the other side. And that's um, definitely exercising faith in itself. You know, when things aren't changed right away for us or as quickly as we would like for things to change, but that's, that's building that faith and that Mm -hmm. ex, you know, exercising that faith to become stronger and to know that, Hey God, if I'm waking up every day, regardless if these other issues aren't, um, they're still going on. I'm still good. I'm mm-hmm. still good. You know, Bertha must be in my slides because oh, she oh, said, but God, Bertha, you know what? Well, you that? right there with us, Bertha. <laughs> well, I appreciate that because in our next slide, uh, it's the redeem. You know, we are redeemed for community. And there it is, Bertha. And it says, but God, those two words must be the most hope filled mm. ones known to humankind. In Ephesians chapter two, verses one through 10, Paul describes the grime past of his audience. 
the grim past of his audience, sharing the plight of all humanity. We were bent toward rebellion against God, our lives dominated by sin but, and... But God. Mm. Yes. And, and, and that's what the, it, it's talking about, but God. And yes. then this text. It says, but God, who is rich in mercy mm. because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I, I, I love that. That's but God, you know, and, and our sister, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Elder Karen Lynch Freighter, she's in pain this morning, guys, mm -hmm. but, but she God. is even saying, but God. And that is true. You know, we've got to get to the point where, you know what, Lord, I, I, I'm with you. And then look, if viewers online, make that a hashtag this yeah. morning. Hashtag but God. but God. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever uh, is preceding it, the but cancels it out. And uh, we, we're still saying happy Sabbath to you guys. Yes. And thank you. Uh, I think it's Nedra. Nedra. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We thank you. We thank you. And we love that we can be a part of kingdom building. And you know what, guys? You are a part of this kingdom building as well. Because although we're in this digital space, like mm -hmm. what uh, uh, Pastor Kirk said, we can still share this with someone else. And that's your ministry right now. You know, that's right. Uh, it, 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 and, and, but God. But, but God. God. And, you know, that's something we can just share with somebody today. Mm -hmm. But God, you know, when they come to you and tell you how bad things are, you can say, hey, but God, you know, because yeah. he will change things for us if we let him. Thank you guys throwing that in the chat. Yeah. We appreciate you, fam, yeah. because we need to be strengthened as well. And we need to live in thankfulness that God has already given us his breakthrough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And Paul, I mean, he shared he just shared some stuff with us. And, you know, if you go back to Ephesians and just kind of, room, you know, read it and then ruminate on it, meaning just let it set into your spirit, you'll begin to see like Paul yes. is it is pouring his heart out. And he's just saying, man, I, I'm, I'm praying that you guys can can get where we are or where I am mm -hmm. so that you can experience this freedom that Christ is trying to give us. Because when he stretched his arms wide on the cross, his nails pierced his hands and, and his feet and the crown of thorns on top of his head, he did it for you and me. Right. And he felt and knew by faith who was going to be with him in That's eternity right. and what Satan does not want us to experience and mm -hmm. know and is, is an eternal bliss with Christ because he knows that he has but a short time. And Paul wants us to understand the, the, the grace and the power that God has given us. Yeah. That, yes. You know, it's already there. Yes. He's given yes. it to us. He's given it to us and given it to us so freely. That And that's what's so great about it. And in that free, free, free in that free gift, you know, it's without measure, you know. Oh, and, yes. Because <laughs> all we all we got. Again, I say he knows the heart. Mm -hmm. And and when we're praying, sometimes even if we don't have words to pray, mm. The awesomeness about God is that he knows our heart and what we're mourning about and what we're going through. And even if we've sinned, we, yeah. that grace is there. Yeah. And you said when we pray and we don't know what to say, we can just just, just, mm, mind, just, mm, just mm. or just don't even say a word. That's right. That's right. Because you're having your personal time with your Lord and Savior. Who knows That's your right. heart? Like the Bible tells us, he knows what, how we feel, what we are asking for before we even ask for it. Or even think it. Or and think like it. Um, um, Shauna says, despite the trials and mm -hmm. struggles, but God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. But God. Amen. Amen. And, and glory, hallelujah on that. So, you know, because of that, Paul has said, you are in a new existence, right? And in this next slide, it talks about us being a redeemed community. Oh. It says. Uh, li well, living for Christ and living for God. Go ahead, babe. We okay, are a church. It says, we are the church of the living God. In eternity, God conceives of the mystery or the plan about the church. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Mm. Now that's, you, that's awesome. you know, I love that, you know, especially, you know, when we read verse 20, 
now to him. Or in mm-hmm. some text says, now unto him. Yes. And, and who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. I, you know, for me, that's mind-blowing right there. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> he can do more than we can even think. Well, see, when I think of exceedingly and abundantly, abundantly. I'm thinking of the overflow. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yes. I'm thinking of the overflow, um, mm-hmm. something um, immeasurable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, you know, like like what y'all throwing in the chat, yes, God knows our heart. Yes. Uh, and but God, powerful phrase, it's our weapon. But exceedingly, guys, mm-hmm. and abundantly above all we can ask or think. Yes. And, I, I mean... It just, it, it, you know, when we were young, for those of us who experienced Christmas in, in a nice way, you know, Christmas Eve, you're, you have in your mind, if you didn't go through your gifts prior to, you know, like I'm, sneak. I'm, I did. <laughs> but in your mind, you're like, ooh, I want this, I want that. You know, you just have all these, these things, you know, that you imagine. And, 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 and what Paul is saying that Christ has done something we can't even imagine. We can't even put it into words. We can't even put it into our mind. You know, and even as adults, guys, you know, things that you just thought was going to be the pinnacle of your existence, mm-hmm. you know, you have this idea of how it will be and what it will be like. But what Paul is saying, this relationship that Christ has made for us, uh, it, it's, it, you know, like Brittany, thank you, God. Yes. And it, it's just awesome. But with God just giving his only son, that's unquantifiable enough. Yes, yes, you're I mean, right. just think about it. He gave his only son to save us. Mm-hmm. So that's that's overflow of oh, love oh, there. Yeah, And it will take an eternity for us to be able to understand right. it. Mm-hmm. And then even, you know, I think about those extra blessings, you know, um, Yes, we wake up every morning, and that's that should be enough. But, you know, if God has blessed you where your kids are healthy, um, you're married, and you have a good spouse, that's that's mm-hmm. an extra blessing, you know. And then even if, you know, God blessed you with a, another vehicle or a home, those are extra blessings, you mm-hmm. know. But us just being here and being alive, you know, we always say if he doesn't do anything else, he's already done enough. Yes. So we have to think about what are these extra blessings that he's giving us, mm-hmm. you know, that's abundantly, you know, um, and exceedingly all that he can do for us, yes. you know. So yes. we, we got to really take a look at those things. Yes. And then, you know what, we've got to put the Bible in the context of, especially when we're talking about salvation, right? We've got to put the Bible in the context of, although we haven't experienced it, it's here, right? right? That's how Jesus operated. He would say the kingdom of heaven is in front of you. Mm-hmm. Salvation is here. He hadn't even died on the cross yet, but he said everything by faith as though it was done. In John, the 14th chapter when he says let not your heart be troubled believe in God believe also in me and and when he tells us that he's gone he's going to prepare mansions for us Mm -hmm. by faith he says it as though it's already done and that's how we've got to operate he didn't he didn't second guess it he didn't say I hope I can be accepted by my father after I die on the cross you know taking the sin of the world on my shoulders Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. he says I am going to prepare a place for you but the disciples didn't understand what was going on because he had to die, lay in a tomb, right. be resurrected mm-hmm. and accepted, and then prepare. Right? right? And all we could see is a man who says this, but it hadn't come to fruition. You know, so now it has. So now for us in 2023, we have to believe by faith that he's going to complete what he said he's going to do. Because by Christ, his standard is done. It's done. Yeah. Good morning, my brother Dwayne. Yes. We miss you, man. Yeah. Uh, safe travels uh, and uh, enjoy yourself. And um, Precious said, "I'm not in ho- in the hospital, not in jail, oh, yes. not in the grave, but yes. thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. That's right. Yes, sister. And um, Elsia, I think mm-hmm. I'm pronouncing your name, Elsalia. Yeah. Lord, though, no, thou knowest my situation. Mm-hmm. Do for me and family what we cannot do for ourselves. We adore you, Lord, giving your life to die." yourself to die for us we thank you lord and yes these are some awesome comments and that's true because basically Mm -hmm. what you're you're just reiterating what i've said he has done enough he has he has and guys this is what i love about it 
this sets up our next slide because everything that we're putting in the chat, our agreement that Christ is all and in all, you know, he's our common denominator for, for, my, for my people who love math. You know, even if we have a problem with each other, our common denominator is Jesus and the love for him. So that brings us back to one. Mm -hmm. And that's it, the unity of faith. It says, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Mm, and that's yes. what I love about it. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul is walking us through this faith walk thing. You know, he started out in one, talking about what Jesus did. Two, mm -hmm. confirming it. Three, begging us to understand it. And then in four, he's like, guys, now this is the unity that brings us together. Yeah. Yes. This faith walk is the unity piece. Mm -hmm. And I love it. Everybody who's typing in the chat, chat, you might, your experience with Christ is different, right? right. And even if we don't agree at some point, That's what right. we can agree upon is that Jesus, God's son, who is God as well, loved us, died for us, and has saved us. Yeah, because blood. what Paul is saying that um, Jesus is the Jesus that unites mm -hmm, us. Mm -hmm, yes. He brings it all together. Yes, yes, yes. So, I, I mean, guys, it, it don't get no better than this. He unites us with salvation, with peace and hope. Yes. For all it, of us who believe. And this next slide talks about we are recipients and givers of grace. Now, now we've got to go tell people about it. Okay, therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling mm -hmm. aroma. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. All right. Mm -hmm. So y'all y'all see the picture now? We're in chapter five. And Paul is now saying, be now imitate. Be imitators of yes. God. Imitate what I just mm -hmm. told you. I mean, mm -hmm. this thing, I mean, he yeah. ties it together. Our mm -hmm. unity is in faith, you know, in, in, in chapter four. And now he's saying, because we're unified, let's imitate what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. You know, like Philippians 2, let this mind be in you that was also right. in Christ Jesus. Yes, Brittany, amen. God is in everything. Because we need a role model. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. The ultimate role model is Christ. Because mm -hmm. we can't, I mean, you're good, and I can I can look at you yeah. and, and at some good qualities that but you I have. But I fall short. But you fall short. Yes. So our role model is Christ. Mm -hmm. And God has given us that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes. And, and... <laughs> You know, and he put it so aptly. Now we're walking through this mm -hmm. thing, you know, and our unity is faith in Christ. And then he tells us that we need to model Christ. And then in, in modeling Christ, chapter six, I love chapter six because now he's saying, now you got to put on this whole armor now. Put on this whole yes, armor. Yes, yes. So, you know, uh, that this is our last slide right here. And it, and it gives us Hebrews six, uh, starting with verse 11. It says, put on the whole armor of God. Yes that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, breastplate of righteousness, mm. waste with truth, feet, gospel of peace, shield of faith, helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit. Mm. So we cannot win unless we put on this entire armor family. Yes, um, We can never lay our armor down because if we do, we're unprotected without the armor of God. That's right. So this is the only way we'll be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. That's right. That's right. Soak that in because I call that being dressed for success. Yes, yes. You know, and that's succeeding in this world of sin. You know, you've got to put on that whole armor of God. You know, and, and you know, and when you think about it, you know that 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 spirit, that supposed helmet of salvation. You know, it's got to be in your mind, right? And then the armor represents the defense that we must take yes. in our spiritual lives. Mm. Um, and when I was th reading this slide, I was thinking, you know, the breastplate. Right of here, righteous. the breastplate yes. of righteous, and then around my waist is the truth. True, my feet, the gospel, gospel. of peace. You're running with and it, baby. And then the shield of faith is all over. Yeah, me, right. Yeah, and then the helmet of salvation mm -hmm. in and your then, mind. And then my sword, my sword. Is That's the, a word. The word. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, guys, yes. come on, put it on. Yes, got to put, and you got to keep, keep it, it on. on. And you know, there was a question that was asked: uh, What's the most important piece? And mm -hmm. to me, it's like anything else, and especially for my military people, when you are not dressed in uniform. You may be missing one piece and you're out of uniform. I might not be saying it right, right. but you're not giving credit as being uniform, right? And and what Paul is using in that military um, 
uh, uh, analogy is that you got to have on the whole armor because yes. if you're missing a piece, then there's a deficit, right? Yes. So you can't you can't have on everything and not have the shield of faith, right? And you can't have on everything and not have on the breastplate of righteousness. Mm-hmm. What Paul is saying is you got to have the whole oh. armor of God. All like of Jennifer it. says, we have to be dressed for success. That's right, That's dressed right, for Jennifer, success. Yeah. And you know that when you put on the whole armor of God, you know, sometimes we say to ourselves, you know, I don't even know if I have the whole armor of God on, you know. Oh. But it's, 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 it's faith, guys. You know, you've got it all on by mm-hmm. faith. And then oh, what Paul told us in one. the preceding chapter, act like it, you know. Mm-hmm. And then the preceding chapter before that, that's our unity. Yes. And before the preceding chapter before that in chapter 3, he's saying, good look, guys, I pray that you understand what I'm talking about. Right. And then in chapter 2 and 1, he said, I'm talking about Jesus dying for you and bring you back as one. Reggie says we are God's um, musketeers. Yes. I like that. Yes, That's yes, right. yes. Because we have to know the severity of this battle. Yes. And and like you said, even if we are missing some pieces of this whole armor, putting yes. on the whole armor of God, God knows the heart. Mm-hmm. He knows the faith. And as we grow in our faith, we will eventually put on all these different parts. That's right. Because we this this is a battle for our spiritual lives. Yes, like Corey said, that's the only way we can be able to stand. And guys, mm-hmm. this is the matter of it. So we've got to know how precious mm-hmm. we are and what God has done to us through Christ. That's the that's the essence of Ephesians. Yes. And today, guys, now we see that we are a family. So our, our digital unity. online family, guys, we really consider you guys a family, yes. a part of the OUC family. And not only that, a part of God's world church. And nobody is excluded from this. And nobody. that's what Paul is trying to mm-hmm. tell us. For us to understand, no one is excluded. We are all a part of God's church, his family. Go ahead, and babe. even and even if you know Satan, sometimes you know he will come in and try to make us feel like we're we're not worthy, yes. or you did this, you did that. Mm. But guys, what we're trying to tell you today is the God who died, that gave His only Son to die for us. Mm-hmm. It's telling us to trust me, believe in me, and have this hope that regardless of what you have done, yes. all you have to do is repent. And mm-hmm. ask for forgiveness. Yes and, yes. and so you can be, we can all be together eternally. Amen. Amen. And with our last about 45 seconds, we thank you guys for joining us. Yes. And we want you, we want to see you again. But most of all, I want to see you guys in heaven so yes. that we can come up to each other and say, hey, I, I remember when, what we talked about mm-hmm. online. But we thank God for what he's done for us. Yes. Pray with us. Lord, we just want to thank you so much for this Sabbath, this Sabbath rest. And then, Lord, for the message that you've given us over and over again in your word, how precious we are to you and how you want to spend eternity with us. Uh, and, Lord, to the point where it makes you jealous for a relationship with us. So, Lord, let us accept what you've given us by faith, knowing that it is real and knowing that you're going to come back again and save us all from ourselves and the things around us. We love you, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. Amen. Amen. See you guys. Start here. Start now. October 4 through 7 for OU Live and experience Oakwood for yourself. Hi, my name is Leah Watson. I just got accepted into Oakwood University in the Department of Applied Mathematics. I'm so excited. My name is Dean Kill. I'm here at OU Live. I got accepted. You know, I'm hyped. This has been my dream for a while, so I'm glad God made it happen. Meet students, faculty, staff, and new friends from across the globe. Check out events such as the Academic Fair, Participate in mock classes, the OU Live concert, and the OU Live basketball game, and much more. You don't want to miss out on OU Live with our guest speaker, Oakwood alum Eric E.T. Thomas, the hip hop preacher, Pastor Deblier Snell, and gospel recording artist Keela Richardson. Register today at oakwood.edu forward slash OU Live. Hello. 
Family Ministries have some exciting news to share with you. Beginning on September the 15th at 7.30 p.m., we are starting a new virtual program called Parenting with Purpose, which will be led by our very own Hadassah Darwinkle. So Hadassah, share with everyone about what we can expect. We will be talking about how bad these kids are, how not to spare the rod, how not to want to choke them sometimes. <laughs> Wait, sis. <laughs> now, I know that sometimes they can take us there, but ultimately we do want to make sure that we're doing it God's way and yeah. training them up in the way that he would have us to. Now, I know you've said, I've said, we've heard others say, I wish these kids came with a guidebook. And they do, the word of God. So we're going to dive into some hot parenting topics and see what the good book has to say about them. Okay, well, thank you for explaining that because oftentimes as parents, we wonder, are we doing what's best for our children? Mm -hmm. And if anyone else is experiencing some of the same situations with their children and for them to know that they are not alone. So plan to tune in beginning on September the 15th at 7.30 p.m. every first and third Fridays of the month. The Zoom link is listed below and located on our website. We look forward to seeing everyone. Hello, church. I am Roy Hall, your men's ministry leader at Oakwood University Church. And I'm Pastor Paul Goodrich. We are here to give you some exciting news. We will have a men's ministry weekend starting October the 13th, running through October the 15th. So what's happening Friday at 7.30? We will have a Zoom presentation for men's ministry, Brotherhood, where we will talk about relevant topics, but our major theme is raising the next generation. And you can see the Zoom link on the bottom. So what's happening on Sabbath? Sabbath, we will have the incomparable Wintley Phipps. He's gonna break bread for us on Sabbath, and you don't wanna miss it. And then I hear that he's doing a benefit concert on Saturday night at 7 p.m. for the benefit of the Oakwood University Music Building. Yes, that's gonna be very exciting. You know Wintley Phipps is gonna bring it, and we are so excited to hear him in full concert. So now Sunday, what's going on? Sunday will culminate with Faith, Fun, and Football. Faith, Fun, and Football is where men will come. We will talk about what God has done for us, what he's doing for us, and what he will do in the future. And then we will have football. We will have the best football game of the day where we will air and we will also eat and have fun. So let me just make sure, October 13 through 15, Friday at 7.30 p.m., our Zoom men's meeting, Sabbath, Elder Whitney Phipps is gonna be speaking. He's doing a concert at seven in the evening. And then Sunday at 11 o'clock, our faith and football. I can't wait to be there. And until we meet again, I want you to be prepared and ready because on October 13th, 14th, and 15th, we will be raising the next generation. That is our theme and that is our aim. Thank you. Hello guys, my name is Malcolm Taylor and this is my wife, Nicole Taylor. And we are the family ministry leaders here at Oakwood University Church. I'm Choya, and this is my wife, Chantel, and we are part of the family ministries team, as well as my wife representing Health Fitness Ministries. Do you enjoy spending time with your significant other? Doing things together? Enjoying different activities together? How about working out together? If you answer yes to any of these, then we have some amazing news for you. On October the 22nd, Family Ministries, in conjunction with Health and Fitness Ministries, we'll be hosting our very first Stepping in the Name of Love yes. Couples 5K Walk. As couples, not only do we believe in a healthy marriage, but we also believe in having healthy bodies. So for more details on how to register, go to OUC website and our OUC e-newsletter. So grab your significant other, join us on Sunday, October 22nd at 9 a.m. on the OUC Church campus. That's right, guys. Come on out. Join us. You don't want to miss this opportunity to spend some quality time with your loved one and your spouse. Hope to see you there.
Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good it morning. is good to be here. Good how are morning. you today? I'm doing good. How are yes, you? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and how are you all? Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, look, look. Louise Morris says she did a 5K last week. That's really? awesome. That wow. is awesome. Oh, uh, man. We, mm. I want to say happy Sabbath to you as well. Ingrid, mm-hmm. Ingrid Clark, happy Sabbath. Thank you happy so much Sabbath. for being with us today. We appreciate that. Listen, I want to say this real quick. We do not have the This Week at the OUC uh, video yes, this week. We this week at the OUC, we don't have the This Week. <laughs> it's, it's like a Around. Uh, but but we wanted to just live with you right now, share some birthday and anniversary mm-hmm. greetings. So we're yeah. going to go into Let's that right that. now. Yeah. Okay. So we want to say happy birthday to Eden Ale Baptiste, mm-hmm. Kanisha Clark, That's right. Norman Gillianu. I'm sorry. <laughs> Marie O'Boyle, That's right. Eric Rogers, mm-hmm. and Janice Thomas. Happy birthday. And we want to say happy birthday to Rosalind Bird, uh, Sophia Clark. I'm Fika Hall Sr., Regina Hampton, Joanna Newborn, Danielle Pereira, Jessica Powell, Xavier Wary, and James Wilson. Is that Jimmy Wilson? I think, I think so. so. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> we want to say happy birthday to Sonia Maddox. India, Mikkel, Mikkel mm-hmm. Anthony Perkins. Anthony Perkins is my hey. dude. Sharon Ramsey. David Richardson, Richardson Jr. Jr. That's my dude as yes, well. Yes, <laughs> Lakeisha Avery. Uh, happy birthday, happy birthday. Uh, we want to say happy birthday to Kimberly Turner Jacobs. Uh, happy birthday to you. To Kobe Johnson. Also want to say happy birthday to Ada Kirby, mm-hmm. Elton Lester, Dorcas Lubega, Ami Merchant, uh, Randall Swain. Uh, we want to say happy birthday. These are birthdays on the 29th. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want to say happy birthday to Zachary Fagan. To Timothy McDonald, yes, is that Tim McDonald, yeah. Uh, we want to say happy birthday to Dania Middleton and Dylan Middleton. Happy birthday to all of you. Awesome. And we've got more. We've got Nita Brutus. Oh, now these are celebrating today. These celebrating are, these today, are the 30th. Birthdays. That's right. Oh, That's awesome. right. So Nita Brutus and Kirsten Hardware. That's awesome. That's awesome. 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 Man, Sabbath birthday. I had, I had one this year. Yes, Sabbath you birthdays did. are awesome. <laughs> we also want to wish a happy anniversary to the mm-hmm. following couples David and Andrea Brazel. They, mm. they are celebrating, I think they're 29. 20 Ninth. That's wow. awesome. And then Fred and Geraldine Collins. So yes, 54 <laughs> years. Come that on is in the chat. Time. 54 oh years. And I see several of you are already putting in the chat yes. that you are have experienced a birthday as well. Jennifer Jones says her birthday is tomorrow. So happy, happy, birthday. happy early birthday to you, Jennifer That's Jones. Awesome. We, we are just so excited that you are uh, you are with us today. And if you mm-hmm. listen, if we didn't catch your birthday, if your birthday wasn't in the list, please, by all means, let us know. Please, uh, let us so, know so, so we can celebrate you. <laughs> we want to make sure that we are able to let you know on that. Mm-hmm. Um, man, you, there is a number, I mean, a number of things happening in the month of October. Yes. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm self-producing today, so I'm, I'm trying a couple of things out. Let me see if this works. Look oh, at that. It worked. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, so much happening Ooh, in the October. month of October. I mean, it is packed. I am so excited. It is packed. So listen, so- keep it locked. To all 1,206 mm-hmm. of you on the live right now, make sure you take a screen shot of this thing. Yes. Uh, you don't want to be, you don't want to miss any one of these experiences. Some of them are not on Sabbath. I want to be clear on mm-hmm. that. That celebration of hope with Smoky Norfolk, that's going to be on the 22nd. That's a Sunday. So you want to make sure you are here for those. Want to make sure you are here for those. And if you're in the Huntsville community, please come on through. Come, come on and through, experience man. Experience it in person that's if you right. can. Many, but, but I will say many, if not all of these will be streamed. So our yes. online family, you will have mm-hmm. access, as yeah. they say, <laughs> access uh, to, to, to these programs as well. Mm-hmm. Want to make sure you guys had access to that. Man, um, one, of, one of the things that we always love about the worship experience here at Oakwood University Church is that it is intentional. One of, I, mm-hmm. I'm here every Friday night. Um, yes. and, and it is a buzz with activity and yeah, it so acqui- the children's on. choir yes. is singing today and yes, they were I'm practicing so last night. The mm-hmm. sound team is here. The media team is here. My, the, uh, the Praise Cafe team is here and we're tweaking and we're getting things added mm-hmm. and set up. It, it, what I want, the reason why I'm bringing this up, I want to let you know that what you see happen here on a Sabbath by Sabbath basis is not by chance. It's, nope. it, is, it is something that we know God breathes on and acts, adds his extra special something to it, but it is because there are some 
dedicated workers. And we're going to be bringing some content to you in the next month or two to kind of highlight some of those people who are yes. behind the scenes and share with you some, what is a day in the life like with Dwayne Cheddar, who I runs know. our media team. Yes. Here. That's absolutely going to be awesome. What is a day in the life like with Danita Jones, who mm -hmm. runs our stage and oh, worship management? that would be management, so good to right? see. We, I, I want to see what, that. What is the day in the life like with Client Myrie, who is our head deacon? And mm -hmm. when, they, when do they full, fill the pool? And what are some of the things that happen behind the scenes mm. after the person is baptized? I what do they that. do? So we want to share some of that content yeah. with, with you guys. And we, we hope that you'll, you'll say, keep it locked right here mm -hmm. as, we, uh, as we share some of these pieces with you so that you can also put a face to mm -hmm. the people who are behind the scenes working to ensure the entire worship experience is something that we can all enjoy. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick shout out here, Ben. Ingrid Clark in the chat. Love that. Sam, yes. Suzanne, Suzanne Baptiste is in the chat as well. So many different things. Listen, Pastor Snell is going to be preaching a message today entitled, uh, That's a Good Offer. You just looked at me like <laughs> Yes, I did because I did not. I wasn't sure. But that's that sounds a, great. That's a good offer. And you know, Pastor Snell, he always brings Ooh. a powerful world so i am ready to take it all in this is i want to see that ready. hashtag atwi in the chat atwi for those that are not aware it stands for all the way in mm -hmm. it stands for all the way in if you uh have been following along with us yes. listen we've made the all the way in playlist into uh something that you can go through and just binge watch. Mm -hmm. You can just watch all of them. So. Yeah, and I'm actually going through the book again yeah. because it's so good. I'm like, ooh, I missed that last time. Let me yeah, go back and yeah, read that yeah, again. Yeah. So it's been awesome. It's, it is... As, <laughs> <laughs> Ingrid says, we feel your excitement. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited, man. No, no, this this uh, this series has been absolutely phenomenal. I, yes, it I, has. I mentioned earlier in the before the Sabbath school that I was in Montgomery last week with the Gulf States Conference, and one of my slides was uh, kind of talking about the purpose of live streaming. And live streaming is is the response. Live streaming mm. is the continuation of a conversation you have already begun with your online audience. Just take that. That's free. I'm giving that to you for free. They had to pay for it, but you're getting it for free. Live streaming is the continuation of a conversation you've already begun yes. with your online audience. And That's so true. I gave them the mm -hmm. example of the book. All the way in is mm. a book. It's a 21-day guide to a spiritual revolution. That book was the beginning of the conversation. Yes. The live stream, the 21 days of live mm. streaming was the continuation of the conversation. You had to have read it yes. in order for you to come yes. in and have the conversation. Yes. But, it, you know, so these are some of the principles and practices that we are employing here for ministry mm -hmm. to have effect and impact. Now, here's the here's the unintended uh, 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 outcome. Five or six people came up to me after my presentation and said, where can I find that book? <laughs> <laughs> Where can I find that book? Where where can I find the All the Way In book? And so I was able to share that with them, and they were able to get their copies. And we're just excited about all that God is doing in this space, and we're excited that you are along with us. There's yes. 1,267 of you, 1,267 devices. I always have to devices, correct myself. Devices, because you never know. It could be in a home on a TV screen and five family members that's are watching. Right, so that's right. That's right. That's a small representation of the actual people that's watching. That's correct. That's correct. Listen, I'm gonna, I want to share one other thing with you guys, even as we get ready uh, to join the worship experience that is already um, happening, and that is, if I can find my slide, where'd my slide go? <laughs> Bear with us. Hey, oh, okay. Donna Davis from Montego Bay, Jamaica. Jamaica. My okay, homeland. Okay. I see it. We see you guys. Happy Sabbath, peaches. This is this is the slide. This is the mm. slide. My bad. I, I you're gonna hear. A, a, you're gonna see this video. There's a promo video that will be played during the worship experience today. But uh, following the evangelistic path of, Paul, of of the Apostle Paul, Breath of Life is celebrating 50 years in 2024. And so in September of 2024, there will be a seven day Greek Isles cruise wow. with one day in Rome and Italy tour. Amazing. You don't want to miss this thing, family. This is going to be Save up your pennies. <laughs> Make sure you are yeah, there. Yeah, 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 you yeah, do yeah. not want to miss it because there are only 200 seats available. Absolutely. You don't want to miss you that You want to be in that number. You don't want to miss that thing. It's going to be absolutely yes. amazing. But fam, man, listen, we we are getting ready. I, I can see uh, Pastor Raphael's table is all set mm -hmm. up and uh, the, the Oaktown thing is getting ready to be set up there as well and so i'm just kind of watching out of the side here to make sure but i see some of your comments as <laughs> yes, well yes we see you guys hi d goodrich from barbados another place ah. that i live that i love hey. crystal reynolds oh 
happy 92nd, 92nd birthday, birthday Sammy birthday King. 92nd birthday to wow. Sammy King. I, that's what I was getting ready yeah. to, to highlight there. 92nd birthday. That is phenomenal. Awesome. Uh, let me see what else we got here. Rosalind Mentor Marcel was on the trip last uh, to Israel this year. Oh, really? So I'm wondering if she's going to try and join for the mm -hmm. for the for the cruise that would be uh, nice. next year celebrating 50 years 50 yeah. years that's of this time. ministry wow. breath of life that's a long time and and when you think about it uh, <laughs> that's there's only four, only been four uh, speaker directors that's so true. 50 wow. years over the span of four directors that's that's amazing, that's amazing. That is amazing. That is amazing. Well, Happy family, Sabbath, listen. Sabbath, Doreen from we, Zimbabwe. Okay. As, as mentioned, we are going to join our Sabbath worship experience that is already in progress. We we ask that you would take a second, share, tag a friend, do all the different things, and we'll see you immediately following yeah. the worship experience. Hi kids, I'm Brother Ida Kay, and I'm the Oaktown News Team, and welcome to Oaktown Live. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but some children have entered the Air Power Car Challenge to see who could get their car to go the furthest, uh, to see if they can get it to go further than mine. Now, while I'm sure they haven't been able to do it, it's been rumored, I mean, it's been going around that someone may have beat my record, uh, but we don't have time to investigate. We do have time during the story. Oh, well, are you sure? Uh, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit today uh, during story time. And we need time for that. The Air Powered Car Challenge was one way to introduce us to the subject of the Holy Spirit. So we will take the time to see what the kids did during our story time. Oh, well, I guess we'll find out uh, in a few minutes. Uh, so that's all for now. Uh, next up, our birthdays and then our story. And remember, Oakland is indeed the place to be, unless there may be a chance you might lose the contest like me. Tegan, Alice, Edmund, Grayson, Nathaniel, Caleb, Amir, Baraka, Juliana, who's now 13, Carson, who's now 13, Landon, Zahara, Happy Sophia, birthday. Carson, Regina, Lila, Milana, Raytron, Nora. God has blessed you with one more. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy, 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 happy birthday, birthday to you. I mean, wait, praise God, God has blessed you with another one. In fact, we want to give a special birthday shout out to Lila, whose birthday was on yesterday. Happy birthday, Lila. 
<laughs> She's as happy as we are. That's wonderful. I love it. I love it. Well, today, guys, we're starting a new series on the Holy Spirit. Can you guys say Holy Spirit? Yes. And we know the Holy Spirit is God, like God the Father is God, and like Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God. And we're going to talk about that in a few moments. But first, let's talk about our air powered car challenge because that was preparing us for our series on the Holy Spirit. Now, as you know, Brother IDK challenged you to see if you can make an air-powered car that will go farther than his. Now, he wanted me to actually show you how far his would go. And I was thinking he probably should be here, but he said it was okay for me to be here. It would be about the same thing. That's what he that's what he indicated. So I said, okay, uh, but I don't want to mess it up. He said, you couldn't mess it up because he feels his is so good, anybody can make it go. So let's see how, we, how, how it goes here. All right. And he also, I had a three-foot table here, but he said we at least need six foot or more. But I, I just went on with the six foot. So let's see. All right. Well, it's kind of curved, kind of made a left turn. That sounds like him. All right. So let's go ahead and measure then. We started at the end here. His went, went two feet and about eight inches. That was pretty good. I, he may have won. Did anyone get theirs to go farther than that? Two feet, eight inches? You got yours to go further? You got yours? Well, you didn't send me your videos. Did anyone else? What? Who else? Who else got theirs to go further? Anybody else? You got yours? To, oh, I didn't see any videos or pictures of it. And did, where's Rain? Someone told me Rain did it. Did Rain do it? Where's Rain? Oh, hey, Rain. Did you do it all as well? Can you bring yours up? And anyone else who did it, you can bring yours up. If you brought it, you can bring it up. And then Sage, is Sage here? I heard Sage did it too. All right, can someone hand that over so we can see? All right, can we put our hands together for rain? She participated. There's Sage. Sage is like, I'm making my way. I'm making my way. All right, thank you so much, Brooke. So, wow. Can, show them your car, guys. Oh, my, isn't that nice? I see the number 24 on there. Reminds me of somebody. I can't think of. All right, let's see. Sage, let's see yours. Let's see yours. Oh, it's so nice. Can I hold it? Just, yeah. Oh, look at that. Isn't that nice? I love it. She's like, I'm not 24. I am sage, okay? All right. That's so awesome. So, Brother IDK's went about two feet, eight inches, and he figured he'd beat you. How far did yours go, sage? Sage, how far did yours go? Do you remember? How far did yours go? That sounded like Brother Idike, didn't it? I don't know. I don't know about you. Okay, how far did yours go? Uh, I don't know either. Mommy, how far did theirs go? Sage went 10. Rain went 12. Oh, can we put our hands together for them? Well, then that means yours went further, Rain, than farther than... Brother IDK, so you're going to get the $25 prize. Let's put our hands together for rain. And, and we're going to have to get you something too, Sage. I, we're going to make sure you get something too, okay? All right. In fact, we're going to give both of y'all the same amount, 25 to both of you. Is that all right? All right. Let's put our hands together for them. You may be seated. Oh, that's so wonderful. So we did the Air Power Car Challenge to get us ready for our subject on the Holy Spirit. So when we think about the cars, they had wheels. What, what are some things that they had on the car, that was on the car? What was on the car, Stephen? What did they have on their cars? A balloon. What else was on the car? Wheels. What else was on the car? Huh? A straw. Okay, so we had a straw. We had a balloon. We had wheels. What was the thing that gave it the power to go? Yes. The balloon. Okay. What, what, what gave it the power to go? That's a good start. What gave it the power to go? Brayden. The air that was blown into the balloon helped it to go. What do you know about air? Tell me something you know about air. What do you know about air? I'm going to get some kids that hadn't answered already. 
What do you know about air? It's invisible. It's invisible. What do you know about air? Um, uh, when you blow into the balloon and when you let it go, the air goes out of it and it pushes the car and the balloon forward. Oh, just give us the science and the physics of it. That's all right with me. <laughs> Brother Attica needs to sit at your feet. All right, that was good. So all those are great properties of air. What do you know about air? When you blow out your mouth, it air comes out. Yeah, when you blow out your mouth, air comes out. That's important. That's important. What do you know about air? It's gravity. It's gravity. Another scientist, but that's not the subject, but that was really good. That was excellent. I love it. What do you know about air? I can't reach you, Skylar. What do you know about air? Air is a force of nature and a type of gas. I, I just can't take any more answers at this point. All right. Wow. So let's kind of sum it up, sum up at least three things about air that I think all of you pretty much touched on. So one, air is everywhere. Air is where? Everywhere. Can you guys stand up? Can you stand up for me? Stand up for me. All right. I want you to point up. Is air there? Okay, point down. Is air there? Point to your left. Don't, hit, don't, don't poke anyone's elbow out. Is air there? Point to the side. Is air there? Point to yourself. Is air there? Yes, air is everywhere. All right, you guys may be seated. So air is everywhere. Air is, someone said, invisible. And let me add something to that. Air is invisible, but air is real. Air is what? Real. So let's put our hands up to our face. Not too close. Not too close. All right. And I want you to blow on your hand. Did you feel that? Huh? Did you see it? Oh, you guys weren't looking close enough. Okay, let's try this again. Put your hand up. Okay, now really kind of strain your eyes. Strain your eyes. You may have to buck them a little bit. Okay, you guys ready? All right, now blow. Look, look, see if you can see it. Did you guys see it? No, because air is invisible. But did you really feel it? Yes, because air is real. All right, so that's so. Air is everywhere. Air is real. And we cannot live without air. All right, so those three things. Well, guys, we did the air-powered car challenge to make us think about air because air is so much like the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. The Holy Spirit, point up. Holy Spirit's up there. Point down. Holy Spirit's there. Point left. Holy Spirit's there. Point right. Holy Spirit's there. Point to yourself. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. The Holy Spirit is invisible, but the Holy Spirit is real. And we need the Holy Spirit to live. Let me read you a scripture. The scripture says this. It's in Psalm 139, starting at verse 7. Your spirit is everywhere I go. I cannot escape your presence. If I go up to heaven, you will be there. If I go down to the place of death, you will be there. If I go east where the sun rises or go to live in the west beyond the sea, even there you will take my hand and lead me. Your strong right hand will protect me. So the Bible even tells us the Holy Spirit is everywhere. Well, there's so much more to learn about the Holy Spirit. We're going to do that in the next few weeks. But today we're going to actually l listen to a song. And some of you may know the song. The song is sung by Elena and Vincent from the Atlanta, Georgia area. And let's just put our hands together and thanks to them. When you see them, though, you won't recognize them. They were here last week for Nathan's uh, baptism because they're, they're older now and they look older now. But they're singing it. And Alan Eloy is the one who produced it for me, a friend who was there in California. Let's put our hands together for him. Yeah, so I wrote it and he was able to produce it, and I thank God for that. And then when we get to the end of the song, what part of the song? Toward the end of the song, I want you guys to help me out. You guys are going to say, he's the Holy Spirit. He's the Holy Spirit. Try it. He's the Holy Spirit. One more time. He's the Holy Spirit. Oh, I hear you. All right, we're ready for the song. Sing. 
Someone asked me about the Holy Spirit. Can I touch him? Can I feel him? Can I hear him? I know he's holy, but can he still hear me? I'm just a child, I'm just a kid, but I still have problems I wanted to hear. So let me tell you about the Holy Spirit. He's God and he has no limits. He's here and there and every space in time. And when your problems are proud about it, he'll make them alright. He came into my life. He's, He's the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. When I accepted Christ. He's the Holy Spirit. Spirit. I hear you. He tells me do right. He's the Holy Spirit. And he helps me you guys do sound good. Right. He's the Holy Spirit. He works with Sing me. Sing it, Elena. He's the Holy Spirit. He talks with me. He's the Holy Spirit. He set me free. He's the Holy Spirit. He comforts me. He's the Holy Spirit. Okay. Listen, listen. He's the Holy Spirit. Louder, louder. Mm, he's the Holy Spirit. Now turn it down. He's the Holy Spirit. Loud again. He's the Holy Spirit. He's the Holy Spirit. All right. Put your hands together for Elena and Vincent and yourselves. Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the Holy Spirit. We look forward to learning more and more about him, but most of all, allowing him to be in our lives and everything that we do. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let the children say amen. A couple announcements before you go. Children's Church is next week. When is it? Right. And we need our volunteers, all of them and more, okay? Our sermon notes. How many of you guys got your sermon notes? Okay, make sure you get them. They'll be out in the lobby. Snacks after church. Tickets for sermon notes after church. We're giving out gifts on Wednesday at Play and Pray. Thank you, guys. We'll see you guys in a bit. Good morning, Oakwood University Church. I want to thank Pastor Snell for this opportunity to speak with you this morning for a few minutes about the J.L. Moran Alumni Chapter at Oakwood University. First, J.L. Moran. The J.L. Moran Chapter was named after the first black president of Oakwood College, James Moran, in 1932. The chapter is the oldest alumni chapter in the country, having been formed in 1947. We're also the largest alumni chapter with well over 100 members and growing. And we are the most active alumni chapter in the country, always doing something. For the past few years, the chapter has focused on helping graduating seniors clear financially so they can graduate. Now, I am here today for a special announcement. I'm here with Miriam Battle, who is the director, Battles with an S, right? Who is, she is the director of major gifts and plan giving for the university's advancement office. We want to share with you an exciting venture between J.L. Moran and the university. I was going to make the announcement, but I was overruled by Dr. Pollard, who was going to make the announcement via video. So let's take a look. Hello, 
I'm Les Pollard, president of Oakwood University, and I want you to think of Oakwood as a place where memories are made and where legends are born. I'm talking about our music program, and we've got something tremendous taking place as a part of our capital campaign. Remember the date, October 14 at 7 o'clock p.m. There will be a benefit concert by none other than Mr. Wentley Phipps, Elder Dr. Wentley Phipps, who will be performing, and he's doing it for a good cause. It is to assist us with the renovation of our music building. Now, when you think about music at Oakwood University, you think of what we call the Oakwood Sound. It has been made legendary and popularized by world-renowned artists. We want to make sure that the continuing and future legacy of Oakwood musicians will be blessed because we've got a brand new space completely outfitted and modernized just for them. Please remember, October 14, 7 o'clock p.m., and we want you to look at the QR code and to sign in with your support. Now, your support can be in the form of $100 or $1,000 or even $10,000, but whatever you give, we will be grateful and God's music will continue to move around the world. So I'll see you then, October 14, 7 o'clock p.m., Oakwood University Church. Get the QR code, and again, we thank you for your support. Dr. Pollard, we're looking forward to this fascinating adventure. J.L. Moran and Oakwood University in a partnership to raise money to renovate the music building. And you all know how important music is to the Oakwood University Church. Am I right about that? Amen. Now, I have a personal, a personal s s look at this. I came to Oakwood in 1958. It took me five years to graduate. Needed a little financial help there. But all during that time, I was fortunate enough to be an Aeolian. Amen, somebody. So the Aeolians did a lot for me as a young man from the projects of Pittsburgh. Oh, I could tell you a lot of stories, but we don't have time for that. We just want to, I just want to give you a personal invitation to come out and support this concert, October 14th, 7 p.m. Pastor Phipps will also be the speaker for the hour during the 11 o'clock service during that day. But we want you to come out. We want you to enjoy the concert. We want you to bring a donation, and we want to have a wonderful time in the Lord for the legacy of music at Oakwood, helping students, helping Oakwood. Will you come? Looking forward to it. Thank you very much, and God bless you. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Welcome to the worship experience of the Oakwood University Church. Located on the campus of Oakwood University in Huntsville, Alabama, and the home of the Breath of Life Television Ministries, Experience worship where Christ is first. Lives are transformed. And sharing God's love flows freely. Welcome to the Oakwood University Church Worship Experience. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It is a blessing to see you in the house of the Lord as well as those who joined us online. Before we start our service, we have just a few brief announcements, but I want to just begin by having our principal, Principal Dent, share some good news about some things that are happening with Oakwood Academy. Would you receive her with a hearty amen today? Good morning, church, and I'm always excited about sharing good news. I want to talk to you a little bit about the National Council for Bri Private School Accreditation. And I want you to know in the last year, the faculty and staff of Oakwood Adventist Academy worked along with our school board to ensure that Oakwood Academy is fully accredited. Oakwood Adventist Academy, this certified that Oakwood Adventist Academy, which has demonstrated to the academic community at various levels, that it effectively fulfills the requirements, provisions, and standards prescribed by the Accrediting Association of the Seventh-day Adventist Schools, Colleges, and Universities, and the National Council for Private School Accreditation in the efforts to provide the highest quality educational experiences for its students. 
Oakwood Adventist Academy received its sixth year full accreditation Amen. from 2023 Amen. to 2029. And I want you to know on 7,000 Adventist Boulevard, we run a real school. Amen. Did you all hear me? Amen. We're running a certified real school that has practices, policies, procedures in place. So I want you all to understand that the work that is taking place at Oakwood Adventist Academy is what should be done for our students. Amen, amen. Let's give Principal Dent, the faculty and staff in the, of the Academy, hearty amen. We're grateful for the great work that is going on there and we celebrate God's continued goodness to our school and to the children who are being educated there. Just a few brief announcements. As many of us know, next week is OU Live, but that's gonna begin this Wednesday night. And so Dr. Eric Thomas is gonna be with us this Wednesday evening uh, for our Wednesday night prayer meeting, and then we'll continue into OU Live service next Sabbath. Now, I do want you to know, church, that October is going to be a special month as we move into our fall season. There's a special Sabbath or a special thing happening each Sabbath. So next Sabbath, Oakwood University Live will be taking place, and I'll be sharing a message from the Scriptures next Sabbath. And then on Sabbath, October the 14th, as you've heard, uh, Pastor Wentley Phipps will be our divine worship service, and he and the Oakwood Oak University Aeolians will be in concert that Saturday night at 7 o'clock p.m., and then on Sabbath, October the 21st, we're going to be having a special day of prayer and praise. That evening, there's going to be an online prayer service from 8 to midnight. And then we're excited, and you'll hear a little bit more detail about this on Sunday, October the 22nd at 7 p.m. We're going to have a special service entitled Celebration of Hope. It's going to be a night of testimonies and song. We're going to be blessed with the musical group Decree the Inspirational Choir of First Church, and gospel recording artist Smokey Norfolk. Can you say amen? And so I want to invite you to bring family members, friends, co-workers that are not church, that need some encouragement. It's going to be a night where we lift up the name of Jesus. And then the final Sabbath of the month, we'll be blessed with the musical ministry of gospel recording artist Jonathan Nelson. So we got a full October in place for you, and we want to encourage you to make sure that you are in place to receive all of the blessings that God has in store. And so at this time, family, we want to take a moment to acknowledge any guests or visitors who are with us at Oakwood for the very first time. Maybe somebody is visiting from across town. Maybe somebody is visiting from out of town. And this is your first time with us. Don't be shy. We invite you to stand so that we can recognize you today. I see some family there in the back. Amen. My sister here in the front. Amen. Right here in the front as well. Let's put our hands together and give them a warm Oakwood University Church welcome. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. And so, church, we've been sitting for a little while, we're hearing announcements. Let me get everybody to stand to their feet for just a moment. And as you stand to your feet, do me a favor. Find four or five people. Give four or five fist bumps. Give several hugs, handshakes, smiles. Let's welcome one another into the house of the Lord today. Come on, we came to bless his name this morning. Worship and magnify his name because his name is Christ the Lord. I don't know how you may be feeling this morning, but look at your neighbor and encourage each other as we sing this right here. Can we sing it? Say, we have come. We have come into this house, gather in his name to worship him. Come on, let's sing it one more time. Say, we have come. We have come into this house, gather in his name to worship him. We can sing a little bit better. Say, we have come. We have come into this house. Yes, sir. Gather in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship. Worship Christ the Lord. Christ the Lord. It says, let us lift up. Let us lift up holy hands. Can we magnify his magnify name? Magnify his name and worship him. Let's sing it one more time. Say, let us. Let us lift up holy hands. Magnify his name. Magnify his name and worship him. Let's put it in part. Say, let us. Let us lift up holy hands. Magnify. Magnify his name and worship Christ. Lord. Do me a favor and stay right there. Say, worship him. Worship him. Come on, all the happy people in this place. Say, worship him. Worship him. I don't know how you may be feeling. Open up your mouth. Say, worship him. Worship him. He's 
been a good God this week, hasn't he? Say worship. Worship. Let's take it to another level right there. Say worship him. Worship him. Yes, sir. You sound real good. I hear you in the back. Say worship. Worship him. We bless his name this morning. Say worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say worship him. Worship him. Come on, we can take it up on a level. Say, worship him. Worship him. For what he's done. Worship him. For who he is. Worship him. For the ways he's made. Worship him. Every single day. Worship him. We bless your name. Worship him. We praise your name. Worship him. We worship you, Lord. Worship him. Let's say, worship. Worship him. Christ the Lord. Amen, amen. As we ignite our worship service today, we want to begin by repeating our church mission statement. Uh, That's there on the screen. Our goal as a church is becoming the church that Christ intended. And there are some clauses I want you to read with me. Our church receives all people. Our church addresses real pain. Our church prepares the next generation. Our church invests in family. Our church prepares people for the next advent of Christ. If you want to be that church, let me hear you say amen. And we're going to continue by repeating our Sabbath covenant, which is found in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. Let's repeat that as a body. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. The sea and all that in the midst, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And Psalm 103, the psalmist simply says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me will bless his holy name. And I love what he says, I'm going to praise him with all that is within me. So I don't want you to just praise him with your thoughts. I want you to praise him with your hands. I want you to praise him with your lips. I want you to praise him with your soul. I want you to praise him with all that is within you. For the Lord is just that good. And he is just that worthy of our praise. And so right now we just lift holy hands unto the King of Kings today as we pray. Father in heaven, our desire is to experience you in an intimate way today. Lord, we did not show up just because of habit or out of routine, but Lord, our need drove us to this place. And so Lord, we stand upon the promise that whenever two or three gather in your name, you would be there in the midst. So Lord, we pray for divine visitation in the building. We pray for divine visitation for those who are online. I pray that you would satisfy the desire of every creature who's joined us in worship today. Bless us to this end, we ask. In the wonderful name of Jesus, let those who believe say together, amen and amen. I want to invite you to remain standing as we sing a couple songs of thanksgiving to our God today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's remain standing as we sing our opening hymn, Sound the Battle Cry. Hallelujah. Christ is captain of the mighty throne. Sound, sound the battle cry. Raise the standard high for the Lord. Gird your armor on. Stand firm. Rest your cause. Sing it out, rouse the soldiers. Marching on we go. Marching on we go. 
all our cause we know must prevail.
God of Zion. Come on, we take the time, we bless his name. I don't know what you may be going through, but I need you to know that there's no father that can take care of you like my father, my heavenly father. I don't know what you may be feeling, but I need to open your mouth and proclaim that there's no God like Jehovah this morning. We can take our time. Everybody say, there's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. I've searched all over. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Like my God. There's no God like Jehovah. Like my God. Say, there's no God like just all over, couldn't find nobody, was high and low, still couldn't find nobody, there's no God, there's no God, there's no God, he's God for Adam, he's God for Abraham, he's God for Isaac, he's God for Jacob, he's God for David, he's God for like Jehovah say amen. amen. Wow. Thank you, praise team, once again. You may be seated. And for those who desire to come to the altar at this time, please make yourselves available at this time. It's prayer time. What time is it? It's prayer time. I want to ask you a question. When you pray, who do you base your authority on? You see, when you go before God, you need to show your ID. For example, when you go to the airport and they say, show me your ID, it's because they want you to verify that you are who you say you are so that you are authorized to have access, access to go through a secured area to get to your gate. Likewise, brothers and sisters, the Father always authorizes the Son, and the Son always authorizes the children of God who carry his or her ID with his name. In other words, you and I must base our authority on the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, Wherefore God hath highly exalted him, and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, say Jesus, at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. The question again is, when you go before the Father, you should not forget your ID. There are some prayer requests that I want to bring to your attention, a number of prayer requests. First, Praise, the first praise report that I want to bring to your attention, Elder Lisa James's mother had successful surgery. Amen. I have another praise report. 
Elder Karen Lynch Freita is doing better due to her previous surgery. Let's give God the glory. Keep in prayer the Mary and Willie Epps family. The funeral services for their son, Adrian Epps, is Monday, October 9 at 1 o'clock p.m. And it will be held at the First Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Huntsville. Please keep in prayer the Cheryl Henry and the Provost family. The funeral service for mom and aunt Inez Henry will be at the OUC on Friday, October 13 at 11 o'clock a.m. And that's the Oakwood University Church. Please keep in prayer Lydia Simmons, Sheila Smith, and Diana Colbert, whose funeral of their mother, Mandy Martin Andrews, was on yesterday. Keep in prayer Joa Arema, his niece, Ruth Maria, no knee, recently passed. Her memorial service will be on Thursday, October 5 at the Oakwood University Church. Pray for Keisha Forson, her mother Dorothy Forson, recently passed. A memorial service will be held on Sunday, October 22 at noon in the Mosley Complex. Please keep their family in your prayers. Pray for Lennox Marr, his brother, Major Marr, who recently passed. The funeral will be held on October 8 at the Mount Pisgah Church in Miami, Florida. And finally, keep in prayer Amanda and Calvin Harris, her mother, Delilah Elizabeth Berry, passed recently. Now, as you have come to bring your petitions through the throne of grace, I want you to know, without any reservation, that Jesus is God's answer to your prayer. Come on, we can sing it right here. Say, when we speak your name, when we speak your something name, something happens in the room. Something happens in the room. Our hands go up. Our hands go up. Says, we can't wait. We can't wait to see what you're going to do. Say, when we speak your name, we speak your name. We say, power is released. Power is released. As we, as we bow down before you. Says, every demon has to every we can say before we do anything else, we, do anything we, call on you. we call on you, before we do anything else, before we, do anything we, call on you. we call on you, say we call on Jesus, say show up, show up, move how you want to move, do what you want to do, do what you want to do. Dear Lord, before we do anything else, we call on your name, your matchless name, our dear, most kind and gracious Heavenly Father. We just want to say thank you. Because before we do anything else, we want to acknowledge you. Lord, there are so many needs in the building so many needs online but Lord you knew our needs before we even knew them before we even begin to speak them Lord you already know so in this prayer Lord we ask that you meet us at the point of our needs Lord there's some people like the psalmist who are in the moment of slipping looking at how the wicked prosper and how they seem to get away with things. But Lord, I'm under the impression that there's somebody like me who walked into the sanctuary today and, and can see your mercy, your goodness, and your grace and are beginning to know that before we do anything else, we can call on your name. Because in your name, there's power. In your name, there's healing. 
In your name, there's reconciliation. In your name, we find everything. So, Lord God, give us the peace that passes all understanding. Lord, I can't call every need that's here this morning, this afternoon, today. But I know on your Sabbath day, you are eager to bless us in our prayer requests. So, Lord, my brothers and my sisters, we pray together. And, Lord, what I'm begging for today is that you come quickly. Lord, I'm begging that you save us from ourselves today. Lord, I'm begging that we are, that we can be with you for eternity now. But Lord, because that has not come to fruition this very moment, by faith, I will hold on to it as if it's already done. And I'm asking my brothers and sisters who are under the sound of my voice to grab hold of their faith that wherever they are in life, that they know that God is in control. So Lord, we end this prayer by saying thank you, thank you, thank you, amen. Come on, we can sing it out there as we sing out. Real strong, say before we do anything else. Before we do anything We call else, on you. We call on you. We can say before we do. Something happens in the room. Something happens in the room. Come on, we say our hands go up. Our hands go up. We can't we wait. We can't wait to see what you're gonna do. And we can't wait to see what you are going to do. What's good, family? Listen, life can always be hard. Troubles always abound. Man, and difficulty never RSVPs. I want to encourage you to take one night and get away from it all. Join me on Sunday, October the 22nd at 7 p.m. for a celebration of hope. It is where we're going to lift up Jesus in song through testimony and the word of God. We're going to be joined that evening by gospel recording artist Smokey Norfolk, gospel recording group Stephen Manders and Decree, and the Inspirational Choir of First Church. I need you to know it's gonna be a night where we're gonna celebrate God's goodness in the midst of life's difficulties. Again, that's gonna be Sunday, October the 22nd at seven o'clock p.m. right here in the Oakwood University Church Sanctuary. For more information, go to our website at www.breathoflife.tv. I look forward to seeing you as we celebrate our hope.
Good almost afternoon, church. Before we do our offertory, I have an announcement to make. We have a new month coming upon us. And it is a month of October. And do you guys know what happens at Oakwood University Church in the month of October? Some of you do. It is Pastor's Appreciation Month. I thought I'd give more claps than that. It is Pastor's Appreciation Month. Now, I believe it should be all year round, but you know, we've got the month of October. And we want to be thankful. Well, I, I'm thankful for our pastors. Are you not? And, and I'll tell you something, because I'm a PK. Although pastors might look wealthy, they're not rich. Now, they're rich in Jesus. Now, mercy and grace. But pastors cannot hold a second job. You know, for, for those of you out in the audience, if, time, if money is a little short, you can actually grab a part-time, right? But our Adventist pastors cannot hold a second job. Their salary is not the greatest. That's why they're missionaries. And they get paid once a month. So all I'm telling you is, I'm talking from a pastor's kid standpoint and understanding pastoral ministry. We've been taught as Adventists, some of us, that God will take care of the pastor. Don't you worry about it. But I'm going to dispel that myth. Because, you know, Jesus told the Pharisees and Sadducees around him, that those are rules that y'all made up. Because Paul says, take care of the one who's preaching. He does. So all I'm saying is, if we bless our pastors so much that they have an abundance, do you know that actually trickles back down? And I'm, I, I shouldn't be this long because we got to do offertory, but do you know that pastors, faithful pastors, pay tithe and offering? So do you know not only do they not get paid that much, think about it, they give 10, 15, 20% back to their own job. How many, who does that? Do you guys give 10% of your check back to your job? Come on, y'all. So I'm asking my, my OUC online family and my family who's in that building, we've got the whole month to do something nice for our pastoral team. And what you see on Sabbath starts Saturday night. This is a seven day a week job. This church is a huge machine that keeps rolling all the time. And we're doing funerals, weddings, counseling. Come on guys. So I, I'm sort of begging you and I'm trying to get some of you guys who are in the myth that we don't take care of our pastors because God will and he will. But he does ask us, if you feel something on your heart this month of October, and what we're going to do, we're going to give you means, and not means, but ways to give of your means. Right? So that you can bless the pastors, okay? Amen! So now in our offertory, since I took a long time with the pastors. Now, the pastors would like your gift, right? But does God need your money? Does he even want your money? That's a hard question to answer, isn't it? But what God says, I, instead of sacrifice and of animals, you know, and in our day now is money, I want you. But here's the thing, if you give God you, your money comes with it. Because where your treasure is, that's where your what, guys? That's where your heart. And do you know your house? To God, that ain't nothing but popsicle, popsicle sticks put together. That's going to burn at the second coming. Do you know your retirement account, your bank account? That ain't nothing but digits on a computer screen. That means nothing to him. So what God is saying is give me you and your treasures will follow. So as we uh, get into the mindset of giving, let's give God our time, our talent, and our treasure. And not only that, let's be faithful. Let's give God our tithe and offering. Let's return that to him. Amen? Because God is willing to bless us. But it's not that when you give your money, he blesses you. But what he does is he blesses you by your faith walk. 
But now the church does need your money. We, we need it. We can use it. But God's going to bless us anyway. I just want you to know that. So as we get into the giving mode, as we complete the year of 2023, going into the year of 2024, let us not let possessions get in front of our relationship with God. And let us be faithful givers. Because y'all, I'm taking a little bit longer than I normally do. I like to stay on point. But this, this, this church is doing something. And, and you've got some naysayers, but this church is doing something. I mean, we do so much, I even forget what we're doing sometimes. We're rolling out this and that, but it's ministering to people. And what God is asking you to do, if, 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 you're, if you can't help at being an elder, deacon, deaconess, give of your means so that this ministry can keep moving. Amen? So as the deacons stand for our tithe and offering, let us pray. Our dear, most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us 100% and just asking us to return a little. But Lord, most of all, what I ask is that we return ourselves to you first. And when we do that, Lord, this church will lack nothing. And we pray that these funds go to bring you back as soon as possible. And it is in your name we do pray. Amen. Good afternoon, church family. We are the children's choir. Um, doesn't hurt to announce every time we sing. We rehearse every Friday, 5.30 to 6 in the choir room. We would love to have more of our little ones join us. We are getting ready to sing two very powerful songs. Um, and I think you'll enjoy them. The first song, God is Working. Uh, there's a part of the song that says, Hallelujah, he's working even now. And we talked this morning, these children know exactly how God is working, even when we can't see it. They described very well how they can tell God is working. Some of us were sick yesterday, and we're here today. Some of our friends were in the hospital, and they're out of the hospital. This is what they said. Or, I used to have very bad asthma. I used to be in the hospital a lot. I'm not in the hospital anymore. They know exactly how God is working, even when we don't know how. So I hope that you enjoy this first song and their second song is In His Time.
children's choir this morning. We thank God for Angela, her team, and the great work that they are doing in teaching our young ones how to praise the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I agree with the words of that song. He makes all things beautiful in his time. And it's just an encouragement for somebody to know that if it's not beautiful yet, it will happen in his time. Amen and amen. Anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. I'm, I'm glad to see you excited about the opportunity to come together and worship God in spirit and in truth. And so today, friends of mine, we're not going to take much longer. We're going to go ahead and jump into the Word. Is that all right? Um, I do want to invite all of our Apple apostles, all of our digital disciples, our electronic evangelists, if you're online, if you could go ahead and share the Word on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, copy the link and send it to somebody that they might be blessed as well. And so today, friends, I want to invite you to stand to your feet as we go into the Word today. Stand to your feet as we go into the Word. And um, I ask for your prayers today, if you would keep my wife Gianna in your prayers. She is speaking for a women's event in Oakland, California today. And so she is away, and we're praying that God would use her mightily there. And, and I need y'all to pray for me. It ain't right when mama ain't home. Come on and say amen. Something... If I feel like I'm preaching angry today, just press pray for me today. Just be like, <laughs> pray his wife get home safely. Amen. <laughs> uh, we want to go a couple places in the scriptures, and we're going to let all of our kids' choir and parents get back in. Um, we, we're going to continue in our series today entitled All the Way In. And what we've been talking about for the last few weeks is we don't want to be most of the way in. We don't want to be part of the way in. Are you with the pastor? We want to be all the way in with Jesus today. Amen? And so I want to have you look a couple places with me in the Scripture, and then we'll settle ultimately in Mark chapter 10. So let's begin in James chapter 1 and verse 17. Over there toward the end of the New Testament, the book of James chapter 1 and verse 17. When you get there, let me hear you say amen. The book of James chapter 1. And verse 17. And then we're going to slip over to the book of Deuteronomy. Then we'll stop back by Matthew and then we'll settle in Mark. Um, James chapter 1 and verse 17. When you get there, say, Pastor, I'm here. The Bible says this. That every good and every perfect gift is from above. And comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Now, if you don't mind, go over to Deuteronomy chapter 8. That is over there in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 8. And I want us to look together at verse 18. Now, again, I'm having you read these things for a purpose because it creates a framework for some of the things we'll teach on today. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse number 18. When you get there, say, Pastor, I'm ready. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. We learned that every good and perfect gift comes from above. And then Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18 says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives power to get what? To get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. So we know that every good and perfect gift comes from above, and it is God that gives us power to get what? Wealth. Now go with me to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, and we will look together at verse number 25. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. When you get there, just say amen for me. Matthew 6 and verse 25. Jesus speaking says this, Therefore I say unto you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And he says, are you not much more valuable than they? And so go with me lastly to the book of Mark chapter 10, which is where we will settle sermonically. Matthew, Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10 and verse 17. When you get there, say, 
I'm ready for it. Mark chapter 10, and we're going to look together at verse 17. All right? I just need to know real quickly by show of hands, who needs a word from the Lord today? I just need to know where to aim it. Amen. I want to, I want to aim it away from those who just came to church. I want to aim it at those who need a word from the Lord today. Mark chapter 10 and verse 17, a very familiar text to many of us today. The word says, now as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said unto him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he answered and said unto him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way. Sell whatever you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Come take up your cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word and he went away sorrowful because he had great possessions. Today, saints, for a little while, with your prayers and God's help, I want to talk under the subject, that was a good offer. That was a good offer. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would allow your presence to settle upon this service. And Father, my prayer today is that you would give me strength to preach the word. But Lord, would you give the body the faith to hear and act on your word? Father, we realize that we are closer to your return than we have ever been. And Lord, we don't want to allow a single thing to stand between our souls and our Savior. So Lord, I pray that you would hide me in the shadows of the cross, that Jesus alone might be seen, that Christ alone would be heard. And at the end of our time together, may Jesus alone be praised. Bless us to this end, we ask, in the name of him who is altogether lovely. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Let those who believe say together, amen and amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Again, talking on the subject today, that's a good offer, a good offer. You know, friends, our text today is filled with essential truth for the soul. And the first thing this teaches us, beloved, is that our greatest needs are not financial or physical, but our greatest needs are spiritual. Here we find Jesus concluding a time where he blessed the children by laying hands on them and he's preparing to leave the region of Judea. And though the story of the rich young ruler does not have a happy ending, there are some traits about him I believe to be noteworthy. You see, the gravity of his need is seen in the desperation of his approach. In fact, the word says, friends, that he would not even allow Jesus to leave town, but he runs him down on foot, falls on his face before Christ, and makes his request known for eternal life. Now, this scene would be a spectacle to most because as a wealthy person, he is perhaps used to traveling by chariot, but this day he dismounts and comes to Jesus on foot. As a ruler, he's used to being accompanied by security, but at this time, he outruns his convoy and beats them to see Jesus. And this man, as a ruler, is used to summoning people to come to him, but this man doesn't send anybody to see Jesus. He goes to see Jesus for himself. 
And need us to know, friends, that he does not come to Jesus with a display of show or power. He does not approach Christ with self-importance or titles. He does not come to Jesus clad with hubris, but there is a soul desperation that drives him to Christ to seek eternal life. Now, I need you to get, friends, that this would not be awkward if there was a physical illness that drove him to Jesus. In fact, we're used to seeing people like blind Bartimaeus make a scene to cry out for physical healing. We understand why the woman with the issue of blood would make a spectacle to get healing for her 12 years of illness. We know why lepers would swallow their pride and burst through the crowd to see Jesus. We understand why the sick and the crippled and the cancered would go great distances to get their needs met by Jesus. But there is something altogether different that drives this man because from an earthly standpoint he has everything that he needs the Bible says he is young so that we can presume that he has his health we know that he is rich for the Bible says he has great possessions we know that he is a ruler a man and great authority and yet his soul desperation drives him to Jesus in such a way that he's temporarily concluded that my everything without Jesus is nothing. And what he's showing us today, friends, that our greatest need is not physical. Our greatest needs are not financial. Our greatest needs are not relational. I need you to get, church, that our greatest needs are spiritual. And see, the problem, friends, is that sometimes it is only physical circumstance that creates spiritual urgency. And I don't want to stay here long, but I need to say this to the church, that we ought to spend more time praying about the internal than we do praying about the external. Let me say it again. That we ought to spend less time praying about the external and more time praying about the internal. In other words, we pray hard about physical sickness. We pray hard about financial sickness. We pray hard about marital sickness. We pray hard about relational sickness. And the problem is this, is that circumstantial sickness we take to the emergency room, but spiritual sickness we treat with Tylenol. Y'all acting brand new. And also our circumstantial sickness, we address right away, but we get to that spiritual illness whenever we get to it. And what I'm saying to somebody today is that you've missed the point if you spent more time praying about your arthritis than your attitude. You, you should not be praying more about your enemies than your ego. You should not be worried about being financially cleared if you're not spiritually cleared. You shouldn't be praying more about a house than holiness. You ought not be praying more about rent than your readiness. You ought not be praying about a career and not character. You ought to spend more time praying about the growth of your faith than the growth of your finances. And this is the key, church. The problem isn't that we pray about those things. The problem is that we pray from the outside in when we ought to be praying from the inside out. See, how many of us know that your prayers ought to be like an oven, not a microwave? You see, a microwave cooks from the outside, but guess what? The outside will look done and moist, but the inside will be cold and hard. But your prayers ought to be like a conventional oven where, man, the work is done on the inside, and the last thing to be completed is the outside. And see, the problem is that when the inside, outside gets first, fixed first, then we cease to pray about the inside. Are y'all hearing me today? And see, the thing I need you to get is that the issue is how we invert the order. Because when you have internal growth, I need you to know that the external is going to follow. In other words, when your faith grows, guess what? Your finances will grow. When you deal with your ego, guess what? Your enemies begin to decrease. When you address your attitude, guess what? Your marriage is going to get better. When you address your character, guess what? God is going to bless your career. Are y'all hearing me today, saints? 
And what I'm saying is that we can't focus all on the surface. We got to do a work beneath the surface. Let me say it this way. I remember growing up uh, in high school, Malcolm, I would work at Florida State University in the dorms painting and doing odd jobs. And so we would paint the dorms from one color to the next. And there were times where we would be lazy and we would try to paint over the yellow and paint it white. But once it began to dry, what happened is the old color would begin to bleed through. And what we learned is that we had to put this thing called primer we had to put primer on it that kind of covered what was underneath so that what was on the top would never be wasted. And what I'm saying is that you've got to prime your inside in prayer. Don't just try to cover it with the external. You've got to have something that's going to bless the internal. And so I need you to get this, friends, because the rich young ruler has everything that is external, but he is missing the internal. And I need you to know that it is internal lack that ultimately drives him to Jesus Christ. And beloved, this is an epic thing for our consideration because what he's showing is that if you have the external, you can't be content if you don't have the internal. But guess what? If you've got internal wholeness, guess what? You can be content without some of the outside stuff. And see, beloved, the reason that you've got to focus more on the internal is how many of us know that every external problem is going to be canceled by the second coming of Jesus? I need you to know that every external problem is going to be canceled, but unaddressed internal problems are going to become permanent. Oh, y'all not hear me. I need you to know that the coming of Christ is going to cancel every physical problem. The coming of Christ is going to cancel every political problem. The coming of Christ is going to cancel every racial problem. The coming of Christ is going to cancel every sickness problem. The coming of Christ is going to cancel every uh, 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 relational problem. Is there anybody excited that when Jesus comes, he's going to cancel every external problem of life? But the reason you've got to focus on the internal is how many of us know that the only thing that's going to make the trip from earth to glory is a character that is complete. Where y'all at today, church? In other words, it is not until the character is complete that it's going to make the transition from earth to glory. Is there anybody that knows the car ain't going to make it to glory? That, that your house is not going to make it to glory. That your degrees are not going to make it to glory. It is only a completed character that's going to make the trip. And so I can't spend my time worrying about the outward trophies of life. I've got to make sure that my soul is right with God. Okay. I, I remember probably about four or five years ago, maybe about seven year, years ago, I remember I was in need of a new iPhone. And so, man, I go into the Apple store because my phone had been dropped. It had been cracked and it had uh, uh, our brakes all in the phone. And so when I went in, I was nervous that I was going to lose the life of the entire phone. I didn't want to lose all my notes and all my numbers and all my data. And so, man, I was like, please, can you save the information on the phone? And she said, Mr. Snell, you're worried about the wrong thing. She says, on the inside of the phone is a SIM card. And she says, the SIM card is the life of the phone. And so as long as the SIM card is good, we're going to put the SIM card in a new phone body. And once the SIM card got in a new phone, guess what? It picked up right where it left off. And what I'm saying is that the soul, the soul is the SIM card of the body. And as long as you got a good soul, when Jesus comes, he's going to give you a new body. And if you went down praising, guess what? You're going to wake up praising. If you went down serving, you're going to wake up serving because you just going to continue where you left off with a new body untouched by the curse. Are y'all hearing me today, friends? So the first thing we learn from the story today, friends of mine, is, is that we got to get to a place where we realize that, man, our greatest issue is spiritual. 
But the second thing this teaches us, friends, is that eternal life starts now. See, the Bible says that, man, this ruler, he's so serious about this thing. He ain't even letting Jesus get to the outskirts or the border of town. Bible says that he gets down on his knees in his tarm forward robe, scuffs up his Air Jordan sandals, and he begins to cry out in front of everybody, Master, can you show me how to inherit eternal life? Now, the word that he used to inherit eternal life is very intentional because how many of us realize that when you inherit something, the gift is not reserved for when you die? When you inherit it, you walk in it while you live. And so he's asking God how to inherit eternal life because he knows that eternal life doesn't start while he dies, but he wants an eternal life that he can walk in while he is still living. Oh. You see, he's not just saying to Jesus, y'all with me, church. He's not just saying, I want to go to heaven. He's not just saying, I want to live in a mansion. Because the word eternal life comes from the Greek word ahinos, which literally means ageless life. It means continued life. It means a life that outlives time. <laughs> So he's not just saying, saints, I want to live a long time. He's saying, I want to change life now. In other words, friends, eternal life is a life so joyous that you want it to last forever. Oh, God. Eternal life is a life that is so joyous that I don't want it to ever end. Are y'all with me today? In other words, he doesn't ask for a mansion because he's already got a mansion. He is not asking to rule because he's already a ruler. He is not asking to be free from sickness because he already probably has his health. In other words, his request does not have anything to do with length of days. It has to do with the quality of life he's living. You see, for most of us, we believe that, set the, that eternal life begins at the second coming when we are raised or translated. But I need you to know that eternal life does not begin at the second coming. It continues at the second coming. In other words, it just outlives time. Are y'all hearing me today? Eternal life is not just prolonged life. Eternal life is a blessed life that is so filled with joy that I never want it to cease. In other words, eternal life doesn't begin when my body gets to heaven. Eternal life begins when heaven gets in my body. Ooh. No, no, no. Eternal life doesn't begin when my body feels heaven. Eternal life happens when heaven fills up this body. You see, his request, friends of mine, is not just for Jesus to change his life when he comes again. He's saying, Jesus, I need you to change my life right now. He's saying, I want heaven internally, and when I get it internally, I'll long for it permanently. You see, the problem with most of us is that heaven has to do with placement. But heaven doesn't have to do with placement. Heaven has to do with posture. Mm. Y'all not with me today. See, how many of us know that we're not just waiting on Jesus to come and rescue us. If you've already been converted, you've already received the rescue of Christ, and he simply brings the body where the mind and the affections already are. You see, when Christ comes, all he's going to do is remove mortality and corruption. See, that's why you've got to have eternity now. Because, see, some of us are waiting to get to heaven in order to be happy. But how many of us know if you ain't got no happiness now, 
then you won't be happy in heaven. Where y'all at? If you ain't got no joy now, then guess what? You won't be joyful in heaven. If you don't have peace now, then you won't be peaceful in heaven. In other words, heaven is not a change of disposition. It is not a change of attitude. It is simply a removal of those things that add curse to the life. Are y'all hearing me today, friends? And this is why you've got to have a living connection with Jesus Christ. Because how many of us know that Jesus didn't espouse for us to just wait till we get to heaven. Jesus taught us that we ought to have a little heaven right now. Did not Jesus say, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom? Did he not literally say to his disciples that whatever you bind on earth is going to be bound in heaven? That whatever you loose on earth is going to be loosed in heaven? Did he not teach us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? In other words, we ought to have some of the joys of heaven even in the perils of this earth. Stop walking around talking about when I'm getting to heaven, I'm going to really shout. No, I'm, I'm going to rehearse down here. I, I'm going to practice down here for what's going to happen when we get there. And see, friends, there are three forms of heaven that I believe that we ought to experience even while we're here on this earth. You see, friends of mine, I believe, number one, that you ought to have the peace of heaven. Uh, my feet are on fire right now. See, see, we ought to have the peace of heaven now. See, I need you to get that heaven is a place, a, a place of perfect peace and tranquility. It is a place where ain't nobody anxious and worried and overwhelmed because they know that the Father governs all things that pertaineth unto them. And I believe that we ought to have some of the peace of heaven in the present. Now, the reason some of us are looking at me funny is because we still see peace as the absence of problems. Peace is not the absence of problems. It is God's calm in the midst of whatever uncertainty that you face or deal with in life. Oh, my, my friend, are you hearing me today? See, see, how many of us believe that Jesus is real? No, I'm going to test that because if Jesus is real, he never gives us a command that's unattainable. If he's real and his word is true, there is nothing he says that cannot be lived out on this earth. So he says to us, don't worry. He says, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about your body. Don't worry about what you'll wear. He says pagans chase after these things. And if God said don't worry, that must mean that there is agency on earth. Oh. See, the problem is we feel obligated to worry. We feel more obligated to worry than we do to faith. We feel like worry is a necessity. We feel like it is an impossibility. But if Christ said it, it must be attainable for every son and daughter of the Most High God. And the reason he says not to worry like the pagans, he says your father knows what things you have need of. Are y'all hearing me today, friends? It's crazy because I remember as a child, there'd be times where I would kind of get myself in knots about, you know, the start of school and I'd be begging my parents and I'd be like, man, you know, daddy, when are we going to get the shoes and uh, when are we going to get this and when are we going to get the starter jacket and when are we going to get our hammer pants and all that kind of stuff whenever school was about to start. And my parents would say something like this. They'd say, son, stay in a child's place. And when they said that, it wasn't because I was being disrespectful. What they were saying, and I didn't get it until I was parents, they said, you're, they were teaching me that you're worrying out of your lane. You're worrying about daddy's business. He knows what you have need of. And what I'm saying is when you're worrying, you're out of your lane. Stay in a child's place. Your father knows what you have need of. He's already planned for the mortgage payment. He 
He's already planned for the tuition. He's already planned for your wedding. He's already planned for your career. Stay in your lane. Stop getting out of your place. Stop getting too big for your britches and trust God to take care of all things that pertaineth unto you. Are y'all hearing me today, friends? So we ought to have the peace of heaven. But guess what? You ought to also have the access of heaven. See, eternal life is the knowledge that I have full access to God now. <laughs> See, somebody said, no, when I get to heaven, I'll have access to Jesus. No, you've got full access now. When you get there, you'll just have physical access then. But you got, do you realize you've got heaven's undivided attention whenever you pray? My God is so good that we can all be praying at the same time, and yet he can listen as if you are the only one calling on his name. And that's why the old folk would say, you can call, collect. He'll accept. Tell him what you want. Now, some of us feel like we don't feel we have full access to God now. See, the reason you feel like you don't have full access is because we're still clothed in flesh. And Romans says that the spirit strives against the flesh and the flesh wars against the spirit. So that guess what, man, my flesh kind of pulls me away from the things of God. And the issue is not that I don't have full access. The issue is that my flesh causes my connection to be buffering. And see, and that's why I love what Jesus said in John 15. He says, it is good. He says to his disciples, I know they're tripping when he says it. He says, it's good for you that I go away. <laughs> he says, it is for your benefit that I leave. Because he says, if I don't go, then the comforter will not come. And when the counselor of the spirit of truth comes, he will lead and guide you into all truth. He literally says, it is an upgrade. He says, it's an upgrade if I go away. Why? Because if I stayed, y'all can only have access one soul at a time. And if you can't get to Jerusalem, you might not ever see me. But I need you to know who the Holy Spirit is. The Spirit is just Christ made mobile. So, so that in the old covenant, you went to a temple. In the new covenant, I am the temple, and the Spirit of God dwells in me. Are y'all hearing me today? So we are at no disadvantage to the disciples, because guess what? We take Jesus with us wherever we go. So, so I say it oftentimes like this. Anybody old enough to remember the days before cell phones, where you had to call on a landline? where if you was rich, you might have had two or three phones, but if you was poor, you only had one. Come on and say amen. And guess what? You had to wait on somebody else to get off before you can get on. But now we got cellular phones. My kids got a phone. that We can call out whenever we get ready. And what I'm saying is that Jesus was a landline. The Holy Spirit is cellular service. So I ain't got to wait for somebody else to stop talking. I ain't got to wait for somebody else to get off the line. I'm with Sprint in Jesus. So whenever I call, he answers because I've got unlimited access to Jesus. So we ought to have the peace of heaven. We ought to have the access of heaven. And guess what? You ought to have the strength of heaven. I was shouting all by myself on this. You ought to have the strength of heaven while here on earth. Now y'all say, man, what they need strength for in heaven. You remember that heaven one time had war in it. That, that the dragon and his angels fought against Michael and his angels, but they did not prevail. Neither was there any place found for them any longer in heaven. And that great dragon, the serpent of old, was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. 
And the reason the devil couldn't prevail was because the strength of heaven was too great. No, no, the strength of heaven was too great for him to overthrow. The strength of heaven was too great for him to tumult. So that guess what? He could make war in heaven, but he couldn't overthrow heaven because the strength was too great. And what I'm saying today, that the strength of heaven doesn't mean you won't be attacked. It doesn't mean the enemy won't come for you. It doesn't mean the weapon won't be formed. It just means that the strength in you is too great for you to be overthrown. Is there anybody that still believes that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world? It means that nothing Oh, can overthrow the faith of a child of God. So saints, that means no matter what you're going through, it means you can come through with your faith intact. It is why Paul says nothing shall separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus because heaven's strength keeps me from being overthrown. Are y'all hearing me today, friends? So you ought to have the peace of heaven, the access of heaven, and you can have the strength of heaven. Somebody shout hallelujah today. Okay. So here it is. He comes to Jesus, makes his request, says, Master, what must I do in order to inherit eternal life? And it's crazy because Jesus knowing what's in his heart, puts forth an instruction that's designed to draw out of his heart those things that are hidden. So the Bible says that he is a rich, young ruler. Now understand that when the Bible says he is a ruler, it simply means that he is a religious leader of the time because we know that the Jews were under Roman oppression. So his rulership was one of theology, that he was a part of the sects of the Pharisees or the Sadducees. Are you with me today? So he says, listen, man, you, you know what to do. I mean, you're the big dog. You're the man on this block. You, you know what you want to do if you want to be saved. He says, then just keep the commandments. And notice what Jesus does, friends. And y'all going to get mad at me as Adventists in just a second. But he says, listen, just keep the commandments. And he uses the last six that have to do with our fellow man. He says, man, don't steal and don't commit adultery and don't defraud your neighbor and don't bear false witness and honor your mother and father all the days of your life. And in Matthew's version, it says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. No, I need you to get that the young man's response is not one of arrogance. It's one of confusion. Because in his mind, he's like, well, Lord, I've done all these things from my youth. I need you to get that he's not saying, man, I've done this. He's not saying I'm in. He's not saying I've met the criteria. He remembered that he's already done these things. And yet there is a whole yearning that drives him to the foot of Jesus. He says, I've kept the commandments and there's still something missing. I've been good and there's still something lacking. I followed the rules, but there is still something that's been omitted. So he comes to Jesus and says, Lord, what do I lack? And Jesus says, y'all still with the pastor? Uh -uh, No, don't, don't, don't just listen to me. See yourself as the young ruler today. He says, sell everything you have. Do you still love him? (laughs) Give it to the poor. Then gives an addendum and says, take up your cross and follow me. And then you'll have treasure in heaven. And let me just pause and say to the body of Christ, be careful about saying I'm a commandment-keeping believer. (laughs) Because remember, Jesus did something in the New Testament. Remember, Jesus says, I didn't come to destroy the law and the prophets. He says, I came to fulfill it. 
But you notice what he did was he simply summarized the commandments and kind of watered them down or diluted them down to two. He took the first four that had to do with relationship with God. And he says, this is the greatest commandment that you love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And the second commandment is likened unto it, that you love your neighbor as yourself. And understand that this test was not to have him walk away. This test was to show him how far he had to go. You see, his understanding, Bobby, of the commandments was too small. See, in his mind, just keeping the commandments was just avoiding certain infractions. But God is trying to teach him something much more epic, that obedience is not the fulfillment of the law, but love is the fulfillment of the law. He says, man, if you love me with everything you have, then you met the standard. And guess what? While we talk about standards, you hadn't met the standard until you can say truthfully that I love my neighbor. <laughs> oh, y'all oh, want me to end this one, but I'm just getting started. Amen. You're going to love him, your neighbor like you love yourself. Now, notice Jesus didn't say, make a donation to the Jesus treasury. He said, sell it and give it to the poor. Because he says, I kept all these commandments. And say, so I need somebody to get this. Did you notice that even those last six commandments, all right, don't steal, don't kill, don't covet your neighbor, don't commit adultery. Do you realize that those things don't even really speak to your spirituality? They just speak to human civility. Do you realize that in most society, those last six are simply a part of a civil code of living that even non-believers live by? Non-believers don't kill and non-believers don't say, do you realize that our understanding of the law is too small if it's just about avoiding infractions? Instead of living out the love of Christ in such a radical way that it transforms the culture for the glory of God. See, some of us boast around, walk around boasting about being civil when the truth is we think we're being spiritual. Never confuse civility with spirituality. You think you're doing something. Oh, pastor, you know, man, I, I ain't put my hands on them. That just means you're civil. Laying hands on them in prayer reveals that you're spiritual. Oh, pastor, I ain't cursed them out. That just means you're civil. But speaking a word of encouragement shows that you're spiritual. Laying down your burdens on Sabbath makes you civil. Removing somebody else's burden on Sabbath makes you spiritual. Are y'all hearing me today, friends? I need somebody to understand that giving them a dollar at the gas station to make them go away makes you civil. But giving them your time and your attention, that's what makes you spiritual. Okay. In other words, just being tolerant of them makes you civil. But loving your enemies makes you spiritual. I need you to know that we got to stop measuring our obedience through just the lack of doing an infraction, but measure it by how much we love and how much we are deposit and how much we give and how much we sow into those that Christ deems the least of these. Because until you have perfect love, you're not a commandment keeper. You're just a law-abiding citizen. But I don't want to be law-abiding. I want to be commandment-keeping. And I want to everybody to know that I am a believer by the true metric of Scripture. People will know that I am a believer, not just because of the day of worship, not just because of the length of your skirt, not just because your face is clean, but because you've got the love of Jesus. <laughs> Operating so richly in your soul. Second problem with the rich young ruler is that he loved the gift more than the giver. The brother tracked Jesus down on foot. I mean, I mean, literally, man, I mean, he puts himself all the way out there in front of everybody. And so Jesus, man, I mean, he's straight, man. He's all the way in until Jesus says, sell everything you have and give it to the poor. 
And it's crazy. You could see his whole energy change. All of a sudden, he started knocking the dirt off his Ton Forge robe. He started getting the dirt off his Maggiano shoes. He ties the head back, his head back wrapped back up on his Gucci turban. You can see him reclaim his dignity and his composure and his posture. As he, Bible says, he walks away sorrowful. Now, that's crazy, church. He probably would have been straight if Jesus said, just sell half of what you have. Probably would have been good if Jesus said, just give away a portion of what you have. He might have been straight if he said, Jesus, just give away, if Jesus said, just give away most of what you have. But when it came down to giving... Most of the way in. You can't be half the way in. You can't be part of the way in. You can't embrace eternity unless you're willing to get all the way in with Jesus. And it's interesting, friends of mine. He's literally weighing his wardrobe over against Jesus. His estate over against Jesus, his reputation and love of ease and his names and, and, and his adulation of men, he's weighing that over against Jesus. And you realize he comes to the conclusion that those things weigh more heavily than eternal life. And he walks away because the ask feels too expensive. But you know what this actually shows, friends of mine? is that he didn't really know who Jesus was. So remember, when, when, when he first came to Jesus and said, good teacher, remember what Jesus says? He says, why do you call me good? He says, nobody's good but God. So he's trying to make sure that the rich young ruler knows who he is. You're not just dealing with a prophet or an ordinary rabbi. I need you to know that you are dealing with Jehovah Jireh, Emmanuel, God with us. Why is that important? Because all Jewish teachers had the fundamental belief that all gifting ultimately came from God. We had just read at the beginning of this message that every good and perfect gift comes from above. If he had known who Jesus was, he would realize that he owns the cattle upon the thousand hill and the silver and gold belong to him. If he had known that he was God, he would realize he's the God of Deuteronomy 8.18. He's the one that gives power in order to give wealth. If he had known who he was, he would know he's the God of Psalm 75 where promotion does not come from the east or the west, but promotion comes from God. And it's crazy because he swears allegiance to the gift when the giver is sitting right in front of him. You see, friends, this is the equivalent of choosing an Amazon account above a relationship with Jeff Bezos. It's like saying, Steve, I would rather have Laker tickets than go to the locker room to meet LeBron. It's saying that I would rather have allegiance to the gift than the one who gave it. And see, it shows the foolishness of all coveting and the pursuit of things because how many of us realize that every gift is going to decline? Every gift is going to rust, it's going to rot, it's going to ruin, it's going to go out of style. But how many of us know that if you got the giver, guess what, man? Your gifts are going to always be upgraded because you're in a relationship with the one who supplies all, the one who gives all, the one who does all. And see, friends of mine, you got to always realize who the giver is. Because see, if you don't know who your giver is, you'll swear allegiance to the wrong thing. See, I need you to realize that the giver is God. Your conduit is just the job. Job is just the conduit. So God simply gives it through the job. So you never swear allegiance to the job. You swear allegiance to the God who gave you the job. 
so that even if man takes away the job, I'm still in relationship with the giver of the job. Oh, where y'all at? See, the problem is when you don't know who the giver is, you will sacrifice principle and integrity and your values and your beliefs just to get gifts. But when you know who the giver is, you swear allegiance to the right one. It's crazy. I remember the kids was a little bit smaller. Uh, and one day, man, uh, you know, the, the kids was at the table. I had uh, given all of them some desserts. And, and, and you know, my, my oldest son had finished his dessert first. And my daughter, you know, she ate hers slow so that the other brothers have to watch her eat hers. And, and so it's crazy because now the oldest son is trying to get her to give her the piece of cake. And so, man, he goes and gets a toy that he knows she's wanted for a long time and says, listen, I'll give you the toy if you give me your dessert. Now, it's crazy because she's evaluating the deal and she knows it's a bad deal. Why? Because the dessert is going to be gone in a few minutes. But the toy is going to be around for a long time. And she says something I'll never forget. She says, I'm not giving my toy for the dessert. If I want some more, I'll just ask daddy. In other words, I know the giver. So I ain't got to compromise myself for gifts when you're in a relationship with the giver. In other words, when you know the giver, you ain't got to sacrifice your integrity. You ain't got to give away your farm. You ain't got to suck up. You ain't got to kiss up. You ain't got a brown nose. You ain't got to laugh when it ain't funny. You ain't got to scratch where it don't itch. You ain't got to skin and grin. You ain't got to scratch nobody's back so that they'll scratch yours because you know the giver of all things. Are y'all with the pastor today? Last thing, I'm almost done. Watch this. I need you to get this. So the Bible says, he, Jesus looking at him, loving him. No, no, y'all got to get that part. Bible says he looked at him and loved him. So that the instruction he gives him is not one that is arbitrary. It, it is an instruction of love. So Jesus is not testing him. Jesus is freeing him. word says he loved him. He sees his sincerity. He sees the true desire. He sees that there is something in him that literally wants to be saved. But see, the problem is we just see this as this random test of character. No, what Jesus is doing is freeing him from a burden that he can't carry much further. He's trying to remove the one thing from the man that would keep his soul yoked to this life. So Jesus is wanting to show him the way. Jesus is wanting to reveal to him a customized plan for eternal life. And it's funny because some of us see this story as an indictment on having money or riches. That's not what it is. It, this is custom to this specific man. Because some of us, man, we look down our nose, man, because the Bible says he walked away because he had great possessions. Some of us walk away for a whole lot less than that. Some of us walk away for just a little attention. Some of us put Jesus on the back burner for a video game. Some of us ignore Jesus whenever we get a car. At least that brother had some substance. Y'all say, oh, no, Pastor, I would never walk away from Jesus for some earrings or a watch or a gadget or a device. If you rob God to get those things, you're in the same boat as the rich young ruler. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying today, friends? See, the problem, church, is not that he had possessions. The problem is that possessions had him. It's not that he possessed things but he was ultimately possessed by things. See, things have a way of attaching themselves to the soul and suffocating the being and imposing and, 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 and imitating God in such a way that you reach a point you, you really literally feel like you cannot live without things. 
And see, whatever you possess will begin to haunt you. It will begin to dictate your values. It dictates his movements. Money and wealth becomes a source of stress and strain and anxiety. It dictates everything that he values. It literally traps him in a world of falsehood, artifice, and fakeness where he's got fake things and fake friends and fake success and fake joy. But he is still lacking the thing that matters the most, which is Jesus Christ. So he's saying, Jesus, what do I lack? And when Jesus says, go and sell everything that you have and give it to the poor, what he is literally doing is giving him an opportunity to cut away surgically the yoke that will tie his life to this world for eternity. And it's crazy because it seems like a standard that is too harsh. But I need you to realize, friends of mine, that at some point, Hear the pastor. We will all come to a crossroads where Jesus is going to ask something of you that feels unnecessary. And see, the problem is the contemporary church wants a Christianity that requires no sacrifice. We want to give offerings that cost us nothing. So this was customized to this brother. So for him, he asked him to sell everything that he has. But for you, the ask may be something completely different. For somebody here, he may be asking you to dissolve the relationship you've invested five years in. For somebody else, the ask may be, Shut down every pornographic portal that gives demons access to your mind. For somebody, the ask is go home and take every ounce of liquor and every ounce of weed from your house. For somebody, the ask is to stop walking in pride and self-importance and humble yourself before God. For somebody, the ask is to stop compromising beliefs in order to belong. And if somebody is going to feel too expensive, it's going to feel like too much, it's going to literally feel like, man, God is requiring too much, but I need you to know God is not testing you. He's freeing you. For somebody, the ask may be, forgive the person that's hurt you the most. For somebody to ask maybe, stop storing bitterness and offenses because the interest is compounding in a way that's not sustainable. God is going to make an ask of us at some point that's going to feel impossible. And see, see, how many of us believe we're living in the last days? Now we say that, but we just literally mean it as theology. How many of us realize that there's going to come a day where you're going to fall into one or two categories? You're going to be marked or sealed. Where you may literally have to uproot and leave behind, as did Lot and his family, all that they had known in the life they had built. And if you can't give up a person for Jesus, a habit for Jesus, a job for Jesus, some friendships for Jesus. The enemy is getting ready to put marked on your forehead. I don't want to be marked. I want to be sealed in that great day. See, what I need somebody to understand is that there is nothing that Jesus asks of you that should be too much. And a lot of times what we, what we call sacrifice is just convenience. Oh, I made the sacrifice and came to the prayer meeting. There ain't no sacrifice. Are you hearing what I'm saying, church? Man, I, I would love for us to end this message, man, with rejoicing and praise. But God says, no, I, I need you to put something before the people and let them know that, that for some, that day is today. For some, that day is coming soon. Where, man, I'm going to require, I'm going to draw the line in the sand. 
and say, it's got to be today or never. And the question is, would you then respond like the rest of the apostles who are willing to leave job and boat and livelihood and follow Jesus? Or will you, like the rich young ruler, walk away sorrowful, trying to hold on to the little that you have? Can I give you one last quote? Listen, I'm done. I'm done. I want you to sing in just a moment. But I want you to see something. I need you to see this quote here from Desire of Ages. Two of them briefly. Desire of Ages 523. Self-surrender is the substance of the teachings of Christ. Often it is presented and enjoined in the language that seems authoritative because, y'all with me, church? There is no other way to save man than to cut away those things which, if entertained, will demoralize the whole being. Talks about the rich young ruler. He refused uh, page 520, he refused the offer of eternal life and went away and ever after the world was to receive his worship. Thousands are passing upon this ordeal, weighing Christ against the world. And many choose the world. Like the young ruler, they turn from the Savior, saying in their hearts, I will not have this man as my master. What I'm saying to somebody today, there's somebody that needs to make a decision for Christ, but I pray that you are not like the rich young ruler and you put a wrong appraisal on the offer. See, can I break it down for you? I'll, I'm praying that God will grow me to the point where I'll give up anything in these 70 or 80 years that I might have treasure in a life that has no end with Jesus Christ. There is no sacrifice too great. There is no material too valuable for me to substitute salvation in order to receive it. I want you to minister in this song. Then I'm going to come back and invite somebody to make a decision for Christ. Would you not move? Would you be still? And let the Spirit speak and say what it needs to say unto the church today. A man to gain the whole wide world and lose his soul, oh, and lose his soul. Diamond rings and pearls last only for a few. Why? Give your life to Christ For he cares about you Do it today Please don't delay War on every hand Destruction all over the land do it right now He will show you how Oh, why not give the Lord a try See, education's fine You should be all you can be But tell me, what would it get in eternity heaven is for they who know the way Satan's on your trail why not try Jesus he's never ever 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 failed do it today don't delay war on every hand destruction all over the land do it right now he will show you how oh why not 
give the Lord a try. Oh, why not give the Lord a try? cautions that Jesus gives it's, it's very weird even the way it stands out he says remember Lot's wife destruction was going to get ready to rain down on Sodom and Gomorrah God sent angels to warn Lot and his family and then the Bible says that they fooling around Taking their time. The Bible says that the angel of the Lord grabbed them by the hand and took them outside of the city. He simply said, gave them one instruction. He says, no matter what you do, don't look back. And the Bible says that Lot's wife turned back and turned her gaze upon Sodom. And the Bible says that Lot's wife became a pillar of salt. And it's crazy because Lot's wife was on the outside, but I need you to know what that gaze represented. See, the reason she looked back, she gazed with longing upon Sodom because her heart was still there. So she suffered the fate of Sodom because that's where her heart was. And a part of this series all the way in, friends of mine, it, it is to create a certain spiritual discomfort because I need us to know that there comes a point in time where there's got to be some surgery, where there's got to be some pruning, where there's got to be some detaching ourselves so that we can function as pilgrims and aliens, as nomads in search of a city whose builder and maker is God. So there's somebody today that needs to say yes to Jesus. And again, eternal life is not something that commences at his return. What Jesus is wanting to offer you is a life so joyous, so peaceful, so full of access, so full of strength, a life that is so transformative that you will want it to last forever and ever without interruption. And there's somebody that's got to walk away from some things. And Jesus, again, this was a unique thing. He's not asking you today to sell everything that you have, but what he's saying is, I need all of you. I need all of you. And if having all of you means that you're going to have to say no to it, them, that, do it today. So right now, the Spirit of God is moving upon your heart. There's somebody today that needs to say, I'm going all the way in with Jesus. Maybe you're on the floor, you're in the balcony. You want to say yes to the Savior. I invite you to begin the journey of eternal life. And there's somebody today that needs to begin that journey through joining the church through baptism. Maybe somebody needs to reset through rebaptism, or somebody needs to begin the journey with Bible studies. And as the Spirit of God has moved heavily upon your heart today, if you're online, you can go to OUCSDA.org forward slash connect card. But if you're in the house of God today and you need to say no to that and yes to the Savior, you're saying, I'm going to give him my life, my whole life. I'm not going to be just part of the way in or halfway in. I want to be all the way in. If that's you today, as the Spirit is moving upon your heart, do me a favor. Just stand to your feet. Tell your neighbor, excuse me. Come on down to the front. Give me your hand and give Jesus your heart today. Is there a soul, there are souls, plural, that need to make that decision, that need to make that calling and election sure? So there's somebody that wants to say yes to the first time, and there's somebody that needs to come to Christ and, 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 and commit thyself to him. If you're here today, just tell your neighbor, excuse me, I know what I got to do. I've got an appointment with salvation. I'm not going to be like the young ruler. I, I want to be like the redeemed. And so today... As the Spirit of God is moving upon you, you want to say yes to the Master. I want to invite you to move with quickness and conviction. Just come on down to the front. Give the pastor your hand. Give Jesus your heart. Would you say yes to him? God bless you today, sister. That's a good decision. Amen. I invite you to come on down and enter into life. And enter into life eternal. 
whether you're young or whether you're seasoned, maybe this is your first time in church or just the first time in a long time, you want to say yes to the Lord, you're saying, I'm not going to put it off. I'm not going to say tomorrow. I, I, I'm not going to be most of the way in, a part of the way in. I want to be all the way in with the Savior. So if you're here and God's call is upon your life, would you receive the Lord today? Maybe you're an individual, maybe you're a family, maybe you're a group of friends that want to commit to him. I call you in Jesus' name today. Would you be bold in your conviction? Would you be bold in your decision to follow after the Lord Jesus Christ today? Won't you come, just tell your neighbor, excuse me. I got an appointment with salvation. I know what I need to do. I'm not, I'm not confused anymore. It's clear. But if that's you today, I want to invite you to come. I want you to come. I want you to come. I'm not going to hold this peel all day, but I just want to give a few more an opportunity to say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ today. The Spirit of God is moving upon you. And there's somebody, you feel like the ask is too big, like it's too much. But I want to reiterate the title of this sermon, it's a good offer. He's saying, if you give me your life, if you give me this life, in exchange, I'll give you life eternal. And when I come, I'll remove both corruption and mortality. And you will have a life that starts now filled with so much joy and so much peace. And it will continue throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Is there somebody that will receive eternal life in the sun? And it begins today. If you're here today, won't you come? The Spirit of God is moving upon you. I'm going to close with prayer in just a moment. But I just want to give one or two or a few an opportunity to say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody through baptism. Somebody through rebaptism. Somebody needs to get Bible studies. Come on down, my sister. Come on down, brother. That's a good decision to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the way to go, to be bold in him and for him. God bless you. God bless you. And somebody else that needs to come, don't be timid. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. There's some others that need to say yes. If you're online, you can go to OUCSDA.org forward slash connect card and you can enter into life with the Son, life with Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you want to say yes, maybe you're an individual, a family, a unit, you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, we invite you to come into fellowship with Him. Won't you come? 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 I see a whole family. Family of seven or eight coming on down to Jesus. God bless you. Way to go, little ones. It's a good decision. Say yes to Jesus. God bless you, little ones. Come on down. God bless you. Let's put our hands together for these little ones receiving the Lord Jesus. God bless you. Come on, Mom. Way to lead the way. Amen. Just walk right over here for me. There's some others that need to say yes. If little kids have the courage to say yes, there are some adults that ought to have the courage to say yes. Come on down, my brother and sister. That's a good decision. We receive you in Christ's love and Christ's fellowship. Come on down. There's somebody else that needs to say yes to the Lord. We call you in his name. Bless you. Somebody else that wants to say yes to him. We want to stand in support of those who came. Would you receive the Lord Jesus Christ today? Come on down. There's somebody else that wants to say yes to the Lord. Come on down, young man. God bless you. <laughs> Is there somebody else that wants to say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ today? Amen. Is there somebody else that will receive the Lord? Who wants to receive the Lord? Receive the Lord. It's a good offer. Think about it, church. The most precious gift is free of charge. It's already been paid for by his blood. I need somebody to get eternal life before you again. A life that is so filled with joy that it lasts eternally. Do y'all realize that one day when Jesus Christ comes, that one day you're going to wake up in your mansion, it's going to hit you. I ain't gonna never have another bad day. 
forever and ever 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 amen hey listen I, I believe like some of us gonna be in heaven and because you're so used to having migraines and arthritis you're gonna reach over to the dresser for your pain medicine and realize I don't need it no more because the curse has been removed there's gonna come a day where you will have cried your last tear and not another one will fall from your face I look forward to the day, Marie, where one day I'm going to run my fingers through my hair one more time. Can I get a witness out there? Hey, I'm going to run my fingers through a full head of hair. <laughs> some of y'all can't shout with me, but I got some brothers who with me today. Amen. It's a good offer. Life eternal in the sun. My last appeal is this. You're hearing the word you're saying, Pastor, man, I'm, I'm receiving this series. It's tough. It's challenging me. But listen, I want to be all the way in. I'm down giving Jesus portion segments. I'm all the way in. If that's you, stand to your feet with me before we close. I'm all the way in. You're saying I'm, I'm recommitting myself. Recommitting myself. And, and you don't have to stand just for form or peer pressure, but you're saying I'm, I'm, all, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm not giving segments or portions. I'm all the way in all the way in father in heaven you see your children and lord we stand today not just to conclude a service but we stand today in covenant lord we want to make a decision consciously to not just give portions segments we want to be all the way in lord we realize it's a good offer And Lord, there is somebody who is being convicted to yield some things. May they realize that the thing that you're convicting them to do and asking them to do, that you're not testing them, you're freeing them. You have them in surgery. You're cutting away the yokes that will have their hearts bound to this life, Jesus, that is destined to end. So Father, we just, we should surrender. We give you ourselves, our whole selves. And we pray, dear God, that in exchange that you would give us joy unspeakable, peace like a river, joy like a fountain, and a life that is so transformed that it lasts throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Father, would you grow us to where we're not just law-abiding citizens, but that we fulfill your commandments through perfect love toward you. And perfect love toward our neighbors. And Father, when we leave today, may our prayers not just be prayers about the external. But Lord, may our prayers be more pointed about heart work, pride, selfishness, ego. Lord, help us to let you do the work inside. And we know the outside is going to follow. So Lord, bless those that have come down today. Lord, would you baptize them with your spirit? Would you put your seal upon them that they would be numbered with the righteous throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity? Bless us all to this end, we pray in the wonderful name of Jesus. Let those who believe say together, amen and amen. You may be seated in the house. Man, it has been an awesome, awesome experience yes, here has. today. Yes, has. Uh, there has just been, like, that message alone, uh, just absolutely powerful. Mm. Absolutely powerful. It really was. And, and, and I, I know that they asked for two different appeals in the worship experience. One, for those who want to go all the way in, right? Well, go, well actually, those who want to be rebaptized. Mm-hmm. And then they asked for one, for those who want to... Uh, go all the way in. Yeah. We have on, on, this, on the screen right now, OUCSDA.org slash connect card. That, that is the place that you want to go to be able to sh- let us know what your desire is. Do you want Bible study? Do you want prayer? Do you want to study something? Do you, do you want to make a decision for Christ? Do you want to join this online family? Do you, did you hear God say something to you today in terms of 
you needing to make a shift in what you are giving up. What is God asking of you? That rich young ruler was asked to give up all his possessions, sell mm -hmm. it, give it to the poor and follow him. That may not be your specific question that God is asking you today, but what is God asking of you? Did you hear God asking you that today? We wanted to kind of lock back into this moment just for a little bit longer to appeal to you to let us allow us to walk with you during that journey. For those that made the decision for it's going to be an ep further Bible study, wanting to join the community of faith, let us know by going to OUCSDA.org slash connect card. We want to labor with you in this journey. <laughs> we also want to celebrate with you. But then there was a general appeal. Mm -hmm. The appeal for those who want who want to be all the way in, and that's where he asked everybody to stand. And I saw several yes. of you raising your hands in the yes. chat. I saw some of you putting ATWI in the mm -hmm. chat also. And we want to pray over both groups. I would ask my wife, Kanique, to pray over both of those groups just now as, as, as we solidify and cement this decision that you've made for Jesus today that today would be a difference maker. You can mark your calendar. September 30, 2023 is mm -hmm. the day I decided to go all the way in, withholding nothing. What God is asking of me, I am not going to walk away saddened and downcast. I'm going to commit that what God is freeing me from by asking of it from me, I am going to give it to him, withholding nothing. We want to pray that that can be solidified, that that decision can be diarized, can be written down into the books of heaven. And you can refer back to this moment and this day as a time where you made a decision for Christ to go all the way Amen. in. So we're going to ask you to pray for us now. All right. Dear kind and heavenly father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the word that you just spoke through your servant, Pastor Snell, Lord. It's a word for all of us, Lord, for us to go all the way in with you, Lord. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you just be with us, that you bless us, that we'll mark today in our calendar. September 30th is a day where we turned ourselves around and we made the decision, the intentional decision to go all the way in with you, Lord. Lord, many have come down in the aisles and I know mm. many have posted in the chat, Lord. Yes, and many are filling out that card right now, Lord, because your Holy Spirit is touching their hearts and calling upon them, Lord, to go all the way in with you, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that whatever that question is that you're asking of them, that they feel it in their spirit and that they will give an answer, Lord, that they will give their lives completely over to you. Yes. And that you would free them from the holes, from the bonds that the devil has upon their hearts and that they will give themselves completely over to you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 I see several of you in the chat. Excellent service. Somebody said amen. Someone says yes, Bible study and rebaptism. We praise the Lord. We praise amen. the Lord. I'm asking our moderators to make note of those that we may have missed while our eyes were closed during <laughs> prayer. But we want to make sure that we get a chance to reach out to all of you. I will be checking uh, yes. on, on that link this week where it says OUCSDA.org slash connect card. I'll be checking this week and we want to follow up with you quickly so that we can get you into a study group, so that we can get you into baptismal class. We had a baptism of yes. a few weeks ago where somebody from Miami came all yes, the way up. all the way. This is one of one yeah. of our, our online family yes. members came all the way here to Huntsville from Miami, Florida. For baptism. For baptism. And that can be you. That so could be you. if you make that, that decision you. today, that we would love you. to have you come here and we will baptize you. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. I see all of you saying amen and amen and mm -hmm. amen. Listen, let us know in the chat what your takeaway was today. Mm -hmm. Let us know what your takeaway was. We've put one on the screen. Yes, we have. <laughs> we put one on the screen, but we want to we hear from you guys. What is mm -hmm. Yes. What is your takeaway for today? What is your takeaway for today? Now, uh, there's, there's there's a ton. I, I have I have I, a ton. And of course, I don't want to give away too many because I have to interview Pastor <laughs> Snell here in a second. Um, and, and but but man, th this one was the one that hit me be square between the eyes and I mm. hope that it was one for you as well. Mm. What is God asking of you? Yes. I, I think that's so personal. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. that's so that is that is something that you, you can't, you know, wiggle out of. What is God asking of you? Um, the, the, the rich young ruler came and was like, look, I did all I've been doing all this. 
what, 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 what more do I lack? And mm. in his question, he actually answered his yes, own thing. Yes, he really did. He, he kind of told on himself, like, man, if you're mm. doing all of that, then why are you lacking something? Mm. <laughs> because clearly he knew he was lacking something. And, and yes. all of us, we feel it. We feel it. There's a God-shaped mm -hmm. hole inside of us exactly. that cannot be filled with anything else. And mm -hmm. so we come to the Father and we're saying, God, what would you have me do? And God is going to ask you of something. <laughs> and you know and in you your know spirit what that thing what is. That thing is mercy 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 i see one one other person says in the in the chat spirit lifting sermon today thank you tiffany ed edith says my takeaway is time, time is, is running, running out. out and it is time is it definitely sure is. running it out sure is. it sure and is it sure is i just have so many notes i'm just going to share goodness, a couple from what pastor snell <laughs> said today he said spend less time praying about external and more about the internal because when you're praying for the internal and you have internal wholeness you'll realize that some of the things that you we're going to pray about. You don't, don't need don't it. Need you don't want it. <laughs> and I thought that was so powerful. That's good. That's good. That's good. I see some of your takeaways um, in the chat as well. Continue. Continue. You've got plenty more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But some of them are saying takeaway like Keys Universe says working on being more spiritual than civil. That was one of my notes mm, as well. I have that Because a, a lot well. of people say, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I got some of this in me still, but you know, the Lord will deal with me. But guys, that's being civil. But Mercy. are you spiritual? Mercy. Mercy, mercy. There's just there's a there's a lot. His he, he, there was just his four points alone were a message yes, in and of itself. So that yes. that was something definitely to to think through. I see mm -hmm. several of you. Okay, let me see let me see what Mar Maranatha says. My takeaway is at some time God is going to ask you to sacrifice, plan to be sealed, not marked. Mercy, mm -hmm. sealed mm -hmm. and not marked. Four thousand of you guys are on the on online with us right now. We want to make sure that we're able to engage. Uh, yes. We want to hear what your takeaways have been. Jesus was not testing the young, rich young ruler. Mm. He was freeing Ooh, him. Freeing him. He was freeing him. That was good. That, that was, was so good. good. That was good. So good. Uh, Yasmin Julian. Hey, Yasmin, what's going on? She says, for me, it was about the spiritual part that often we forget to pray for. We seem to pray for physical things, but not enough yes. about spiritual connection. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and another part that Pastor Snell spoke about was when in relationship with the giver, there is no need to compromise your integrity. Oof, that's good. <laughs> when in relationship <laughs> with the giver, mm. he, 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 don't oh my, don't go after mm. the gift. Just, uh, he loved the gift more than he loved the giver. That's what he said of the rich wrong, wrong ruler. Uh, exactly, absolutely yes. amazing. And uh, I just love the analogy he gave of his daughter. She was like, I'm just going to go to daddy. Yeah, I'm just going to daddy. <laughs> I just go to I'm, daddy. I'm go that's my father. Source. Just that's go back the, to the source. The source, the source got me set that. up. <laughs> I mean, the source, the source is, the, the, the source gave it to me in the first place. So <laughs> it can't get better than the source. It can't. It yeah. can't. It can't get better than the source. Mm. Oh man, this is good. Mm. This is good. This is good. Um, we we want to make sure you guys are aware of the oh, yes. the uh, celebration of hope, the Breath of Life cruise, mm -hmm. and then all of the things that are happening in the month of October. We're going to touch on some of those yes. with Pastor Snell just shortly here in a minute. But uh, sur surrender to the giver, Diane. Diane yes. R says, surrender to the giver. Thank you for that comment. And Donna, another, yeah, that Donna yeah, yeah, C says, she says, one of my takeaways is that I need to stay in my lane that as it relates one, to worrying. Stay in your lane. <laughs> Let God one. deal with the rest. Oh, and that's something man. we need to keep reminding yeah. ourselves of. Because yeah. I know for myself, I will worry. Yeah. But sometimes I need to be like, you know what, leave it. God is going to work it out. He's going to fix it. Yeah, point number two. Point number two was uh, eternal life starts now. Yes. And, and, and I think that's a, a shift mm, in thinking. That's a is. shift in perspective. It's a shift in mindset um, and, and, and how we approach the kid, all that we are doing. Um, I, I, like I said, I can't, I can't give away all of my stuff here <laughs> I because know, I, I, I got to talk with Pastor <laughs> Snow in a second. But that SIM card joint, that Ooh, SIM card that thing, was for us. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that was I said, so I said good. man, you, you went technical on that one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The SIM card, man. Oh, that was good. That was good. That was good. Um, that was oh, really that was good. good. And, then the, and then the landline, he land. He said, yes, he <laughs> oh, the Holy did. Spirit is Jesus gone mobile. Mm. I said, come on. Come and on. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I remember back in the day when you had to, you had to, uh, you, you know, you, you'd pick up the phone and somebody was on it. Oh, right? my and, goodness. And it'd be like, hey, I'm on the phone. And you put it back down. Or when someone, you're on the internet oh. and someone picks the phone and you get disconnected. <laughs> or you remember that sound for AOL? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was those. And then, uh, 
um, uh, you'd pick up the phone. Like, listen, and, 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 listen, don't, 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 don't testify on this one. But mm, I know for those say. who have older mm, I know family in, the, in, the, in your household, <laughs> you would be on the phone and the person, your, your, your older family, I mean, they wouldn't even pick up and listen. They would pick up and just start dialing. Da, da, da. <laughs> and you have to be yelling like, hey, 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 I'm on the phone here. I'm on the phone here. <laughs> Those are the good old times. Oh, man, that is priceless (laughs) stuff. That is priceless stuff. Oh, let me see what else we got here. Pastor's analogies are top tier. Mm. Keys universe, I am so, so, I mean, in agreement with you. My takeaway is a bit of heaven now here on earth. Mm. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yes. Ah, that's good. That's good. Camille Bell, it's good. It's good to see you, sis. It's I good know. to see you in the chat. Hey. The old covenant is we just got to go to the temple. The new covenant is we, we are, are the, the temple. temple. Mm. Somebody said, or the dial-up. Come on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the dial-up. Don't pay attention. Don't pay allegiance to the job, Marie mm-hmm. Apollon says. Yes. Don't pay allegiance to the job, but the job giver. The job giver. Yes, the another job giver. analogy he gave was the painting over colored oh, walls. Oh, no. Oh, no. And the color would come through the other paint that you're trying to paint over. Oh, my word. That was such a good one. You got to use primer, y'all. You got to use, use primer. You got to use primer. Oh, uh, there you got to use primer. You got to use primer, man. There's so much. There's so many things that we want to touch on here today. But Pastor mm-hmm. Stell is actually here with us. Yes, he is. And we're excited to be able to 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 bring him on and mm-hmm. and, and interview him. Uh, we we want to we want to play a quick little video. Which video are we playing? Oh, the cruise. We're gonna oh, we want to yes. play this quick quick little video about the cruise, and then we'll interview Pastor Snell right after that. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you in just a second. What's good, family? It's time for a celebration. This past year, you joined Breath of Life as we went on our tour of the Holy Land. We went to the places where Jesus walked, lived, ministered, died, and he was raised. It was an epic time of worship and fellowship. But this year, we're going to do it even bigger. In 2024, Breath of Life is going to commemorate 50 years of ministry. This year-long celebration is going to include evangelistic revivals, concerts, and so much more. But we're so excited to have you join us for our Breath of Life Legacy Cruise. On September the 12th, we're going to land in the gorgeous city of Rome. That Sabbath, we're going to have our joint worship experience. And that Saturday evening, we're going to go out on a historic excursion. That Sunday, we're going to hit the high seas. And for the next seven days, we're going to follow the evangelistic path of Paul along with the apostles of Jesus Christ. We're going to see ancient Ephesus. We're going to visit Naples, Italy. We're going to witness the beauty of Greece. All the while, we're going to stand in awe of God's wondrous creation as we sail along the Mediterranean Sea. It's going to be an epic time of food, fellowship, and worship. Listen, family, we want you to be there with us. I can't wait for us to come together in learning and fellowship and as we testify to the goodness of God. But we only have 200 spots available. So right now, I need you to go and reserve your cabin and get more information at our website at www.breathoflife.tv. We plan to give God all the glory as we celebrate his goodness to Breath of Life for the last 50 years. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you there. Ah, it's good. It's good. It's good amen, to have amen. you here, man. It's I'm, good. It's I'm good. blessed. I'm blessed. <laughs> man, I, I enjoyed that video uh, of the, the 50th anniversary. 50th anniversary. 50 years, man. God, God has blessed this yeah. ministry. Started out as, as a vision of Pastor Walter Ortiz. Absolutely. Um, it has survived a number of seasons. 
Uh, you know, it really started, you know, under the leadership of Elder Brooks. Mm. Man continued to soar with Elder Pearson, reached a new height under Elder Bird. And God has blessed me with the privilege to be able to steward this for this for this season, however long he ordains. Amen. But we really want to celebrate God's goodness. We're going to be a number of different things. We're going to be doing evangelistic revivals in a number of cities. But we're we're going to kind of peak in September yeah, um, as, we, year, as right? we have our legacy cruise. September the 12th through the 22nd. That's awesome. Going to land in Rome uh, on the 12th. Going to have worship there that Sabbath. Going to do an excursion That's that evening. Hit the boat that Sunday. Then we're going to follow the evangelistic path of Paul and the apostles. Looking at different places that you see, especially in the book of Acts. So we'll see Ephesus where those disciples were that didn't know that there was a Holy Spirit. <laughs> or we'll go over to Athens where, man, they sneered at Paul and ultimately mm, rejected, rejected the gospel. Yeah, so yeah. all those places that you learn about, we're going to see those places and we're going to grow. We're going to learn. We'll fellowship one with another. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. That's awesome. That is awesome. Somebody, somebody saying in the chat, Mr. Dimitri says in the chat that my daughter mm -hmm. is my twin. I've never heard. Nobody's ever said that to me before. So, oh, you? I'll take it. Yeah, I'll oh, take no, it. Oh, no, no. I see that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see it. Yeah, yeah. No, I see it. I see it. I receive it. You, you cannot uh, not claim her. No, no, no. Yeah. no. Okay, yeah. okay. I'll take it. I'll yeah. take it. Listen, listen, I, I, I am just, I'm just still, you know, basking in the overflow of the message. Man, and, praise and, God. You know, there is, there's so, there's so many different points that I want to uh, pull out, uh, but in particular, right at the beginning where you talked mm -hmm. about. Um, only a completed character will make it to glory. Mm -hmm. Yep. Only, only like that. That analogy with the iPhone swap. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it, hit, it hits so hard. Oh, you're hard. a tech person too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you, you come you came right down my lane. It's yeah. like the soul is the SIM card mm -hmm. uh, of the body, and and, yep. and God's like, I'm just gonna take that out. I'm gonna take that out. Put, put it in a new in. body. And that's why Paul says that this vile body yeah. is going to be yeah. changed unto his glorious body. Mm. So it, it all it is is just, you know, this life. At when, if, if it ends, it's going to rest. Right. Then when he comes, the Bible says that this corruptible we'll is going to put on incorruption. Mercy. This mortal is going to put on immortality. But what's going to happen is the inside mm. is just going to pick back up. When he put that SIM card in that new phone, <laughs> it literally picked right that back up like it did when I powered <laughs> off. My same picture was on the home oh. screen. The same text threads were still Ooh. there. It literally picked up right where it left off. And, and so wherever we leave in Christ, when he comes, we'll pick right back up in him. And this is this is so critical because it brings up the, a, a critical point. Mm -hmm. Uh, because a lot of us, for a lot of us, mm -hmm. eternal life is there. There, yeah. yeah. Eternal life is is what's mm -hmm. next. Eternal yep. life is what comes after. Mm -hmm. And and what you're saying to us is that there is a eternal life actually begins now. now. Because see, if eternal life only began then, mm -hmm. the rich young ruler wouldn't long for it. No, because he's saying, listen. Man, I have wealth. I have mm. things. I've been good. Yeah. But I'm missing something, something. now. Yeah. Because, see, if it was just a matter of an upgraded lifestyle, he's he's got the lifestyle. He's got it yeah, all. Yeah. But, like, you know, again, the body was not just designed to inhabit heaven. Heaven's was, designed to inhabit the body. Ooh, that's now. good. Listen, this is extra and, and, and so I'm praying that somebody's really digesting that. Yeah. Because, like, some of us, we've been religious. We've been good. We've got things. We've got mm. success. But there's still something missing. And sometimes it's evidence that there is not a living connection. Yeah. See, it's possible to kind of be around religion, like the rich young ruler, right. but still not have an active living connection. And see, what happens is the Bible talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Right, right. So the fruit of the Spirit, that's the proof of the Spirit. Proof. Is another way of yeah. saying it. Or the yeah. evidence of evidence the Spirit. Evidence of the Spirit, right. It's love. Joy. It's joy. Peace. Peace. Mm. Like, those are the fruit of the Spirit. So, like, if I have religion but I don't have the fruit, then I need to kind of reevaluate. Yeah. I need to look at some things. I need to see what's coming from the garden. Wow. And so, man, if my garden is barren, I don't have love. I don't have peace. I don't have joy. There's something missing, missing from the religious experience. And see, and that's all he was. He was a religious person that had been blessed with abundant riches, mm. but those internal things were missing. missing. And see, I'm praying that somebody really got the principle. All of our prayers should not be about the external. It's not wrong to pray about those things. Right, right, right. But man, if I'm dealing with the issue of the ego, the character, yeah. faith, yeah. love, yeah. I mean, those spiritual inwardness things, uh, those outward things are going to follow suit. Yeah, that's, because it's only the internal that's going to last. That's going to last. And I need to be clear. I'm not saying a perfect character, but it, need to, it needs to be a complete, complete character. Mercy. In other words, I need to be as complete 
as I can be mm. where I am on my journey Mercy. when Jesus Christ comes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because some of us are further down the road than others. We've been walking in the way longer. But there are going to be some that are saved at the 11th hour. But they need to be as complete as they, they can be, be in their leg of the journey on the Christ path. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. There's a, there's a portion there where you said... Heaven isn't about placement. It's mm -hmm. about posture. posture. Mm -hmm. yep. It's about posture. And, and the second coming removes mortality. So, mm -hmm. so if you don't have happiness, yeah. you don't have joy, you don't have yeah. peace mm -hmm. now, yeah. then then you're, you're looking forward to a heaven. Yeah. That, that, do you, would you want it conti to continue, to continue yeah. as you are now? So if you like, so I get to this. So let me remove maybe a small category of those who are just physically taxed understood, and overwhelmed. Understood, understood. And for, for some who are aged, you know, rest, you know, not that they want to die, mm -mm. but they kind of understand that this is going to be a rest and right. a ceasing right. of life right. sorrows. Right. Right. But by and large, if we're looking for a new disposition, mm. we're, we're looking in the wrong area. Yeah. If we're looking for a new outlook, a new worldview, like faith doesn't start when you get to heaven. Joy yeah. doesn't start yeah. when you get yeah. to heaven. Yeah. Like, man, life eternal, it, it's the result of living connection with the Savior now. Wow. And so it, it is a life that is so thorough and satisfying that I want it to last forever. forever. And it's funny because there are people I've met, Kurt, who when I talk to them about eternal life mm. or living forever, it actually sounds like a negative. Like, in other words, mm. I'm just going to keep living. It's, <laughs> it's going to continue. Gonna like, this? like, that's not a positive for mm. them because they don't know the joy and the peace and the contentment yeah. and the satisfaction that's it. that is the result of being in a saved relationship with Jesus Christ. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Uh, this is this is absolutely awesome. Uh, uh, Pastor Snell, listening mm -hmm. to your sermons is real. Lord, help my SIM card to be what you want me to Amen. be. Amen. Amen. I love how you want me to love. I love that. Thank yeah. you, so thank you guys so much for your comments as well. You talked about three forms of heaven, and of mm -hmm. course we, we outlined them already, right? Mm -hmm. The the peace and yeah. Uh, well, we didn't outline all of them. Peace was the first. One. Peace was the first one. The peace? second one was the access. access. Yeah. And yeah. then the strength of heaven. Strength of heaven. Yeah. I, and mm -hmm. I love the way you kind of frame those. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, stay in a child's place. Stay in a child's place. Listen, I heard that one Man, growing up. Man, you heard that. I mean, y'all worried about place. this and worried <laughs> about are, that. You when we're going to get this. I mean, just stay in a child's place. Because uh, the point is, you're worrying out of your lane. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're concerned with things that are the father's concerns. concerns. You see what I'm He's saying? Take care and it's one of my kids do the same thing. I'm just like, yo, calm down. All right. <laughs> yeah, we, we, got we got this. this. Yeah, yeah. This, this is already <laughs> on my agenda. Like, your needs are actually further up on your agenda than my own needs. Wow. And, and see, we've got to realize that if we being evil, that part. how much more would your heavenly father, our needs are acutely on the father's agenda. Mm. So that when even when I pray, I'm not informing God of a need. No. You know, I'm just giving him permission I to do. act yeah. on my behalf. Mercy. You know, that's what it is. Mercy. That's what mercy. it is. Mercy. Mercy. Listen, you, you went with another tech analogy today that I mm -hmm. thought was, you know, when you said uh, uh, the connection is buffering, yeah. I said, oh, Lord, yeah, it's buffering. Us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> flesh, flesh causes the connection to buffer. Buffer, yeah. Um, but the Holy Spirit is Christ made mobile. Come mobile, on, that's right. That's right. But some of us are under the assumption then that we don't have full access. Yeah, access. yeah, yeah. But because we're, we're in this flesh, because the Bible talks about how the carnal mind mm. is enmity against God. Is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. Yeah, yeah. So I have this pull. There is something in this fleshly body where Paul in Romans 7 says, good, I want to do, do, I don't do. do. Yeah. Evil I hate doing, That's I continue I do. to do. Yeah. So like there's something, man, that kind of, man, makes prayer, man, a little difficult. difficult right, or yeah. focusing mm. in the scriptures, a little bit hard. I have this internal uh, pull, this civil war. And it just means that connection is buffering, but I got to push through. through. I got to power yeah, through yeah. because I have full access to God whenever I call upon his name. And again, I want to remind you of something we said. The disciples have no upper hand on us. No, none. None. See, when we get to heaven, it's not that we're going to have full access. We'll just have physical access. Physical. Yeah, we'll right, be able to see right. him face to face. face, to face right. We'll be able to not no longer look through the glass dimly. dimly. And I certainly look through it, mm -hmm. but I look forward to it. But I need us to know that whenever you call on the name of the Lord, I'm praying somebody gets this. Mm. God can listen to you as if you are the only person on planet Earth. In other words, when my three kids, they all come at the same time, I've got to uh, mm -hmm. yeah, calm down. Calm down. I need you one at a time. time. Yeah. But that is not, not so with the Father. At all. I mean, he can listen as if you are the only one talking to him. Mercy. You have the undivided attention of heaven.
Man, this, this is this is it's 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 providential almost. Mm-hmm. I, I started the broadcast today before Sabbath mm-hmm. School by sharing with uh, the audience a line from my show. We, okay. we say this often. Yeah, live streaming is a little glimpse of omnipresence. That is this and because Very you much. can be in all these different places at, at the, the same, same time. time. Yep. It's like God in live streaming has given us a gift mm-hmm. specifically designed to finish the work. Finish of the, the work of gospel. Yep. And and you you shared that the Holy Spirit is like a cellular. It is instead yep. of. Landline. Landline, yeah. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't, you don't have to wait in listen, line. And if anybody <laughs> under 20, so they, they, don't really they, they don't really get this. They don't point. really get that point. But <laughs> I remember back in the day, we had one phone in our wow. house. And especially when I was at my grandma's house, you know, what that situation, all the cousins, everybody's living in and out of the house, like right, 10 right, people right, in the right. house. I mean, and you literally had to wait. And this is before call waiting. Mercy. You know, like it wasn't too, <laughs> no, no, it was no, just no busy. Yeah, 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 but yeah, no, yeah. Jesus is, is cellular. Everybody has a line. Everybody, Everybody has access. Everybody it's a beautiful access. thing. And I love that, 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 uh, that analogy where, where you shared it. When you are talking with Jesus, it is as if there is no one else. No one else. Yeah. You and him are alone. And, and this is the where we want to land, mm-hmm. uh, kind of where you landed as well. What do I lack? Mm-hmm. Yep. What do I lack? Mm-hmm. Lord, what do I lack? And I encourage everybody online yep. to, to really lock in with God this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't want to be civil. We want to be spiritual. We want to be spiritual. We, yep. we, we don't want to be commandment keepers. We mm. want to be law. Of, we, we, we don't want to be law abiding citizens. citizens. We, we want to be, be commandment there keepers. It is, yeah. There it is. And We're, the standard is much higher than just I did not do this infraction. Mercy. I just broke this rule. Yes. No, like whenever I'm operating in a love deficit. Yeah. I am breaking the commandments mercy. of God. Mercy. mercy. Like the the commandments of God are fulfilled through love not just obedience of civil codes that can be kept even by an unbeliever. That's, an that's unbeliever amazing. can choose not to lie or yeah. not to yeah. steal or not yeah. to kill. When you look at it, they, in many cases, doesn't even speak to spirituality. And that's why Jesus says, I didn't come to break Mm-mm. it. Mm-mm. I didn't come to do no, away with no. it. I came to show you really how to fulfill the law so much so that he says, okay, when your braver asks you to go one step, you go too. Yeah, yeah, when he yeah, asks you for your coat, your, your your robe, give you give him, him your coat as come well. On, come on. You know, it's like when you they, they the give yeah. to him who ask, you know, and ask for nothing in return. return. Um, it is like 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 the book of Hebrews that says, be careful even how you entertain strangers, because there are times where you entertain angels, angels unaware. unaware. So, like, man, you know, so a part of keeping the Sabbath is not just that I lay down my burdens, but I relieve. Others. The burdens of mm. others. So that Sabbath should not just be a day where I just go to church or I just move from one streaming service to the next. But some of us should be taking our equipping mm. and then going to put it into action Mercy. to help relieve the burdens of somebody in a hospital, somebody in a nursing home, somebody in a prison. We're taking what we're receiving and we're sharing it with somebody else. Wow, 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 wow. They, there's there's a, lot of, a lot of comments in the chat as well. Mm-hmm. We have full access by faith to the power of God yeah. in us through the Holy Spirit. So let's claim the victory. I love claim that, Angel. Uh, Rodney Smith says, anything not done in kindness can cannot be said to have been done in love. That's I, right. I see, I see that distinction there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a, the, that piece that the the, uh, the rich wrong ruler was grappling with. I love how you made it personal mm-hmm. because because that's what it's all about, right? If you if you if you just yep. read the story for the story's sake, like yep. it, it becomes a headline. Becomes You'd be like, like poor news, him, yeah, 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 newspaper. It's like, oh man, this is what happened to the rich young ruler. Yeah. But if you don't put yourself there, then mm-hmm. it doesn't have an, an effect, an yeah. impact on us. And it, it, it was it felt expensive mm-hmm. to him. Yep. Be, yep. Because he didn't recognize he was standing in front of the giver, the giver of the gift of the gift. That's right. And I think a lot of us find ourselves in that space. We just don't know it. We don't know it. Um, yeah. I, I, I think you, you you talked about you know for some of us it's gaming. Mm-hmm. My goodness. Yeah. I oh mean, yeah. We'll, so, we'll ignore cause, God because the us. ask it was customized. Right. To him. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's funny because you stand in judgment of him, but then I'm looking at man. Yeah. I've put Christ second or third for much less. For much less. You see what I'm saying? And he had so, all this wealth. And all of us will come to the point of, of crossroads mm. where that thing that has become ingrained, yeah. that has become entangled, that has gathered around our heart. Mercy. And, and it literally will have a binding effect. It will staple us to earth. Oh my God. Like literally what's going to happen to some when Jesus Christ comes, gravity is going to be to be suspended. Mercy. And those who died in Christ will, will rise. rise. Those who are alive and remain will rise. Right. And the only ones who are stuck on this earth Mercy. are not those that Christ couldn't remove the gravity from, mm. but their hearts are stapled to this life. In other words, and Ellen White literally talks about how, man, you know, the reason Christ won't take everyone to heaven 
because to shut some who are unconverted up in heaven would be torture, to them. Be torture to them. Because the aims, the principles, oh, the man. ideals of heaven are against the nature and the character of the soul. Wow. That's what it is. Wow. So heaven will be hell to some. Mm. It, it, that's what it, life eternal, where, where there ain't no gossiping, ain't no hurting, ain't no harming, ain't no cruelty, ain't no tears, ain't no, no, ain't, you know, like that just does not jive with some. Wow. I mean, you know, I tell people all the time, like, man, if, if two and a half hours of church is too long for you, <laughs> uh, you might kind of have a problem because <laughs> heaven is just unceasing. You know, the Bible talks about these four living creatures that are in yeah, the throne just say holy. and they rest not yeah, day no. or night crying holy, 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 holy unto holy, the Lord. Holy. So, so I just, day again, I, I'm not trying to advocate for long church. That, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, man, fellowship with Christ. Mm. constantly. Yeah. If that feels like too much, yeah. we need to kind of really begin the process of experiencing conversion and regeneration so that heaven appeals to us in every way, shape, and form. Yeah, you know, Keys Universe says, wow, wow, wow. Sharon Ford is mm -hmm. with us. She says, wow, uh, there's there is so much. We need to have love, joy, and peace. God knows mm -hmm. all of our needs. Yep. Listen, there's, there's, you know, my, my dad says, I, I will not I will not give unto God that which costs me nothing. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, this is an old old school phrase. I don't yep. know where he got it from, but I used to hear him say that. Well, all I the think time. it's it's based on a story with David where, oh. where 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 they try to get David to give something. He's like, I, I won't give an that's offering it, that's it, that's it. that costs, costs me nothing. nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, it costs me nothing. And, yep. and and this is what the Christian life is about. Mm -hmm. We it will cost you something. Something. There but, will be a sacrifice. So it's interesting, and I didn't get a chance to get to it because our time was getting away from us. Oh, that's why you should be in the praise cafe. <laughs> so Jesus goes on, you read the rest of Mark chapter 10, mm -hmm. where he says there's no one, because the, the, the apostles hear Jesus say some things like, man, it's easier for a camel to jump through the eye of a needle, needle right. than for a rich man to inherit the kingdom. Then they're just kind of like, oh, snap, oh. who then can be saved? <laughs> no. So then Jesus says that which is impossible with men becomes possible, possible with, with God. God. Yeah. But then he makes a statement. He says, man, there's nobody in this life that gives a, what gives up houses or lands mm. or estates who won't receive a hundredfold in the kingdom of God. And it's funny because, like, man, that's why Paul says, man, I count this these things as light affliction mm. when I look at it in the light of eternity. eternity. He so all these hardships, he talks about famine and peril and hardship yeah. and the yeah. sword and prison. Yeah. Yeah. He says this is light affliction. So he says, man, these current sufferings, sacrifices, right. are not even worthy to be compared <laughs> with the eternal weight that we'll receive in glory. So so much so, wow. that, that's why Ellen White, she makes a statement, that, man, in, uh, in the book, uh, uh, The Story of Redemption. He says, when we get to heaven and we begin to try to even recount My God. our sufferings, yeah, yeah. when we try to call to mind what we've went through, mm. man, we can't even remember them. And she says, our cry, our declaration will be heaven was cheap, cheap enough. enough. Because when we look at what we receive, <laughs> oh, my goodness. what the little bit we had to go through oh, will, will be as if nothing because the reward is so great. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm praying yeah. that somebody understands that there is no real sacrifice. There's just an exchange. An exchange. Where, man, I'm giving up this little that is going to inhibit me for the king, from the for, for, from the kingdom so that I can receive Jeez. all oh. of the riches that God has in store. Remember, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard, neither oh. has entered into the heart of any man that which God has prepared I for those it. who love him. I love it. I love it. Listen, we're, we're, we're landing now. Yeah. We're landing now. I want you to, I want you to pray um, yep. in just a second. We, we, we want to share with you just one or two things really mm -hmm. quickly that are coming up uh, this month. I mean, it's just such a oh, yeah. packed list mm -hmm. of items that we have coming up. Uh, about um, October 4 to mm -hmm. 7, which is this coming week, we're yep. talking about OU Live. Yep. Eric Thomas is going to be here. You're going to speak on Sabbath. Mm -hmm. uh, then the following week, we have uh, Pastor Wintley. It is yep. just a, a, a yep. number of things happening yep. and coming. Of course, we talked about the cruise as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we also have the Hope. Uh, Celebration of Hope. Celebration yes. of Hope. Sunday, October the 22nd, mm -hmm. 7 o'clock p.m. Listen. If you maybe you want to come to Huntsville that weekend, <laughs> maybe you're from a little ways away. That may be a good weekend to join us. Listen, that Sunday night, we're just really going to kind of have kind of a one night 
just kind of hope festival where we're going to be blessed with the musical ministry of the inspirational choir first right, church that's right, that's Stephen right. decree and manders mm -hmm. smoking norfolk we're going to have people sharing testimonies i'm going to give a brief message but it's just really a night where we can just draw our attention and focus away from its cares our hurts mm -hmm. our disappointments man and we can just man praise our way and focus oh, in exactly. on the things that god is doing so it's called the celebration of hope one night event october the 22nd seven o'clock p.m i encourage you to come and join us uh, in, in person that weekend. And then that last Sabbath of the month, we'll be blessed with the musical ministry of uh, gospel recording artist Jonathan Nelson. That's right, that's right. So it's going to be right. a fantastic month of October. I encourage you to make sure you tune in uh, or and or be in person uh, as often as you can. You absolutely do not want to miss it. Don't want to miss it. And and we uh, we always end by sharing three ways that people can support yes, the ministry please. here. please. Listen, if the ministry helped you today, if it added any value to your life, share, share, share. If you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, hit the uh, link, copy it, send it to somebody That's if you're right. on That's YouTube. Right. Um, and then uh, we ask for your prayers with That's Breath right. of Life. Always ask for and your prayers. And then the last yeah. thing we'd ask you to do, friends of mine, especially as we go into our fall month, mm -hmm. we need to close the year strong. We're trying to kind of take every dime you give it, give us, put it right back into the ministry right. so that everything you see with Fresh Start Sunday with our children's ministry, our revivals, that's the result of your giving. Yes. So on the screen are some ways that you can give. I please, I want to ask of you, especially as we close out September. Uh, we've been a little low in our giving in September, but if you can give online at our website, www.breathoflife.tv. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can go by, uh, uh, you get by mail, old school, P.O. Box 5960, Huntsville, Alabama, 35814. That's right. You can call the office Monday morning, 256-929-6460. Or you can text the phrase, give to BOL TV to 188364-GIVE. Or the easiest thing you can do Come on. right now, my friends, like right now, uh, you can <laughs> cash app, dollar sign, Breath of Life TV, dollar sign, Breath of Life that TV. Right. And uh, I see somebody, Larry, in the cruise saying, when the cruise degree. What's good, family? It's time for a celebration. This past year, you joined Breath of Life as we went on our tour of the Holy Land. We went to the places where Jesus walked, lived, ministered, died, and he was raised. It was an epic time it's of the ministry, worship. so it's another way that you can partner with us uh, as we celebrate 50 years of God's goodness to the Breath of Life 50 ministry. 50 years. We are What's going good, to... Man? Uh, come back over to here. Let's get rid of the cruise thing on the screen here. And then we're going to close it out. Now, I, I know that they mm -hmm. asked what, when the cruise was and several other things. We shared how they can um, how they can give and how they can support the ministry. But we do want to close out with a word sure. of prayer. We yep. want you to pray over our online audience, pray over those who made decisions. Somebody asked for Bible study today mm -hmm. in the chat. Good. Uh, we, we've got some messages that have come through on the Connect card. So we're just going to close out with a word of prayer, but also praying over our online family as well. Okay. And, and for those who sent decisions to be baptized, baptized. We're going to be having our next baptism on October the 28th. Uh, so I want to encourage you, if you if you made that decision recently, mm -hmm. hopefully if, if someone hasn't gotten in touch with you, please put your information once again in the, into right. the chat. That's right. Um, or, or fill out our OUCSDA.org connect card. Mm -hmm. We'd love to have you be a part of that particular celebration. Father in heaven, Lord, we just want to take a moment and we want to pray from the inside out. Mm. Lord, there our lacks and our greatest needs. It's not just financial. It's not just physical. It's not relational. Lord, there are spiritual deficits that only you are able to cancel. So Lord, whether the issue is pride, whether it is lust, Lord, whether it is a lapse of faith, whether there is character growth that needs to take place, Lord, would you do soul work? Mm. Would you do heart work? Lord, where there is a deficit of love, Lord, help us to love as you love. Yes, God. Lord, it, it is the highest standard of scripture. So I pray that you would move us in that area. So, Lord, I am praying in the name of Jesus Christ that that we claim the promise of Philippians, that you which has begun a good work in us, yes, God. that you would continue it until the day of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. And Lord, for that person that feels like they can't or they are not able, remind them that they can do all things through Christ who gives them the strength. And Father, I'm praying that you would help us to have a heaven's posture yes, even before we have heaven's placement. Father, fill the soul with such a joy and a peace and a contentment mm -hmm. that we would want a life that is eternal, a life that has no end. So, Lord, I pray, dear God, as some of us are coming on a place of decision, mm -hmm. where there's something you've told us to lay aside, yes, to God. leave behind, yes. to cut away. Lord, help us to not treat it as expensive or unrealistic or too inconvenient. But, Lord, help us to know that you're not just testing us. 
but there's somebody you want to free us. So you say to your word, if the son sets us free, mm. we shall be free indeed. Help us to walk in it completely, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God Amen. bless you. And we will see you next week.